kick to the gut. I like it. <laughs> oh, my brother, can we all just not get along? Come on, man. This is wrestling. Hey, what's up? It's Mr. Young. And it's foreign in the building, bro, Ooh. bro. Ooh, oh. It feels like we are in the end game, bro. You know what's the end game, yeah. <laughs> Actually, no. You know what this feels like? I, I mm. beg to di- uh, disagree, right? See, we disagree, but we can solve our problems through conversation and discussion. And this is mm-hmm. what's the great thing about pro wrestling, not what just went down last week. No, I feel like this is the end of Infinity War, spoiler alert, and Thanos just snapped everybody into dust. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Doesn't it feel like the fallout, like, oh, shit, we are in the five-year gap. You know, the snapping happened, and we're like, what's going on? We, how yeah. do we move on, bro? We have to get to the end game. Bro, we are deep in the bleep, man. I mean, it's been a week. <laughs> but wow, like, I, I feel like um, yep. this week has been, like, an eternity, and we are still kind of, like, the fallout, like, day, mm. every day there's some new, new story that comes out, and, well, hey, my God. Bro. I have one question though. The yep. burning question that I believe everybody in chat also has. What? When the blip happened, huh? Did Thanos snap your moustache away? What happened to the moustache, bro? <laughs> hey, what's up, bro? I think I feel like five years younger, bro. I feel like <laughs> a Gen Z. I can do TikTok. Hey, hey. hey Uncle hey, Ray, man. <laughs> hey, that one not popular already. Uh. This TikTok, uh, the shelf life is about a month or two. After that, not popular wow. already. Tough, man. I need to I need to keep up on my TikTok game. Oh no no no. It's um well my girlfriend's birthday is actually this weekend, so oh. uh, your boy got to clean up a bit lah, you know, ah. bring her out fancy fancy a bit, you know. Shout out, shout out. Yeah, I think she's here. I don't know where she's here, so like uh keep it PG guys. So uh <laughs> so she wasn't feeling the moustache, is that what you're trying to say? Oh no no no, she was, she was, but like uh um, I think it was getting a bit too too much like uh you know Captain America, a bit too much like Chris Evans, <laughs> huh? You need to <laughs> shave it. You know the end game he shaved it right in time before he fight Tano, same lah, bro. Did, did you just compare yourself to Chris Evans? Uh, I'm not America's ass, bro. I'm <laughs> Singapore's, <laughs> Singapore's ass? Singapore's pantat? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, chat, it's good to see you. Thank you so much for being here in what will be a very interesting conversation, to say the least. Hey, Big T, what's up, Irvin? How you doing, Saleh? Let's go. Tovakin loves the title. He says, LFG, let's freaking go. Nice, Ooh, man. boy. I mean, okay. Here's the bad thing I feel about this entire situation because at the end of the day, right, us wrestling fans, we're like, ooh, we love the gossip, we love the tea and just like the internet, just like real life, this negativity, we love to spread it because it's juicy, you know? Yeah, it's, yes. it's gossip. Oh, what's going on here? What's going on there? But what really sucks is the fact that there has been some good wrestling, there has been some good stuff being put out that's completely mm-hmm. been overshadowed by this entire incident. Yeah, it's been swept under the rug. You know what's the craziest thing? When Clash of the Castle ended, right? Yeah. All of us were like excited. Like, oh, is AW going to be able to measure up? Yeah. Uh, I think WWE Comfort had a better show. But then, by the end of the week, no one was talking about Clash of the Castle. Everyone was talking about AW, but not for the right reasons. Yeah, bro, the thing is, um, MJF made an epic return. And whether you like the return or not, I mean, the fans were absolutely on board with that. But yeah. that has also been swept under the rug as well. Yeah, I mean, if I was M. Jeff, I would be pissed, oh. man. Oh. <laughs> hey, you... oh, hang on. Irvin says, Foreign, you lost a hair versus hair match. Is that what happened? <laughs> a moustache versus moustache match, bro. Uh, that one hey, I... versus me, no use because I don't have moustache. I yeah, can't go. I, I sincerely want to know, you guys prefer me clean shaven or with my with my missile, bro? You know, I don't know which look to keep on. Bro. I haven't decided yet, yeah. It, 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 the, the, as much as we love chat, we love the people who listen to the podcast, the people in our Discord. By the way, if you haven't already joined the Discord, please feel free to jump in. But as much as we love them, uh, we all know at the end of the day, the major deciding factor is nobody there. It's not even me, bro. It's the <laughs> girlfriend. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Tough lah. Sometimes got mood swing, you know, one day like, oh, I love you all, like, you know, fully bearded up. Oh, then hey. it's like, you look so old. Ah, bro, 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 bro. You mean your own mood swing, right? Because no, you, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, my own. <coughs> I, bro, yeah, you yeah. just said she might be in the chat. Why are you burying yourself? <laughs> hey, don't bury yourself like CM Punk buried him. Oh, wait, wait, no. Oh, oh. Oh, maybe it has begun. Okay, okay, okay. This is going to be interesting because we are going to argue the case for and against all the parties involved. And I'm very excited, <laughs> Mr. Young. Because yeah. all three, you got, uh, you you have, uh, you know, you got beef with here and there. So I want Wait. to know how you're going to argue for them. Wait, I don't know about beef lah. Huh? But okay, before we do that though, I want to say one thing, right? Like, I really enjoyed this past weekend Smackdown. 
Yes. Um, they course. continue the brawling brutes versus the Imperium thing, right? And coming yeah. off an amazing match, might be the match of the whole weekend, honestly, like from a pure wrestling standpoint, Gunter versus Sheamus, right? Yeah. Um, the crowd was so hot on SmackDown for them when they did the six-man tag. Sheamus finally got the reaction he wanted to get in 2009, lah, bro. I know! <laughs> like, can we please put some respect on Shamus's name? Finally, he's in there with the right guy and the. I, I hope this means big things for Rich Holland, for, for the lackeys, lah, for lack of a better term, right? Yeah, man, for Pete Dunn, my guy. Yeah. Come on, let's get Pete Dunn some shine, man. Yeah, man. Uh, of course, Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni. Yeah, you know what? I'm kind of like, their names, right, are growing on me. Their new names, I mean. Yeah. It's not uh, as techy as I thought it would be. Yeah. But, you know. uh, no more Fabian Eichner and Marcel Barthel. Actually, you know what? You're right. Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci have, have a nice ring to it. Yeah, you know, like, they are wrestling names for sure. It's the kind of names you would hear in the 80s. Yeah. But it's not cringe. It's like, uh, okay, a bit of the stereotype, but I kind of get it, you know? <laughs> Italian uh, and a German together in a team with an Austrian. Okay, yeah. la, makes sense. All of their names are like that. This is the new, uh, what was it, United Nations or whatever they called it already. Um, remember when Seamus had his own group of, like, UK, uh, uh, Europeans. What was that one? League, League of, of Nations. Of Nations. Ah, yeah. ah, with Barrett and everything. That uh, never lasted, so, la. No, no. So, who's... Thanks for being hey, here. Hey, Fast hey, Game hey, SG, it's good to see you as well. The chat is talking about the muffins, the CM Punk Chicago muffins. Oh, that's the one that gives you the power to talk shit, apparently. I don't know whether that one is laced with any uh, of that ganja, but like, <laughs> I think CM Punk didn't become straight edge for one night and become like that. Really. Hey bro, if he got the ganja, he would have relaxed. He went the other way, okay? If anything, yeah. it might be Molly or some shit in there. You know, I learned something, right, from this yeah. whole experience. You know, okay, I, I'm not going to hide it. I'm a, I'm a fan of CM Punk, yeah. right? But just like how you're a fan of Bret Hart, you mm. know, sometimes Bret Hart will say things that like, oh, this guy's still bitter. <sighs> yeah, and actually, that's a good comparison to make because the last time, the last sort of backstage incident that I can remember in my time as a pro wrestling fan was... The whole thing, and this has been documented many times, Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels, they got into it in the locker room. He pulled out Shawn Michaels' hair. Shawn Michaels went crying to Vince McMahon, unsafe workplace, ah, and all that shit. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it kind of exactly a lot of parallels. And yeah. I realised something also. Mm, mm. I thought CM Punk mature a bit, you know. But sometimes, la, very tough for them to rise above the head. He, he's not... <laughs> Okay, this is one thing I must. We have to respect John Cena. Mm. John Cena never nope. sing himself down and like get into all the drama. He might be a backstage politician or whatever it is, right? Yeah. But he's never make a fool out of himself in public. He's a professional, right? And I yeah. know a lot of people are like, oh, everything that Triple H said about Punk was right. Or, oh, the Young Bucks have revealed their true colors. Here's the thing I feel like now the camps. If you are a WWE guy or CM Punk guy or if you are Young Bucks guy or whatever, it, all the camps are out in force with their own narratives, which is very fascinating to watch, right? And it is. I, I'm just very just like, because I do my gaming stream and some of them, mm. the people there are also wrestling fans and we start talking about it and it's like, I mean, I'm like, usually come tune into the kick to the gut where, you know, I will put the thoughts together a little bit better, lah, right? You know, because yeah. while you're gaming, it's like, okay, lah, it's just thoughts that come to my head. But it's fascinating to see all the different narratives when I talk about how CM Punk is there. Okay, would you agree with me if I say CM Punk is AEW's biggest draw by far? Yeah, undisputed. See, bro. that's the thing. Bro, there is a group of people that don't believe that. That believe that the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega, the elite, are the biggest draw of AEW. And then when I come, I ask them about, well, you know, the gates, the uh, uh, viewership numbers, they're like, oh, I always thought it was the Young Bucks. So it's like, it's very interesting that sort of the diehards have that sort of a narrative going for them. And they've been perpetuating this narrative of, oh, you know, uh, Jim Cornette hates us or uh, everybody else is out against us and we are the ones, we, we stand for the little guy, whatever the hell that narrative is. Yeah, you know, okay, we we've we've even interviewed one guy um from this podcast like years mm. back, Farikin, remember? Yeah. Uh, he, he comes to mind a lot because he was the one that was like really kind of introduced me into like Japanese wrestling. Mm -hmm. Um, and he he was very educated on like Kenny Omega, Young Bucks yep. history and that kind of stuff. So there are fans like this who really love their background, where they came from, and I personally read the Young Bucks autobiography and I okay. took the time to get to know their history and all that. So like I understand their fan base. They mm. did have. Uh, or they still ha do have like a, 
um, very niche audience, but the, who are really, really like for them lah, you know. Mm. Um, and their this whole DIY ethics that they stand for, so they do have their audience, right? Um, and but but again, I'm I I'm a CM Punk guy, so like mm. I I was I will definitely go to bed for CM Punk. Um, <laughs> uh, but the tough thing is, uh, CM Punk is really literally that metaphor, you know, you know that dialogue from Dark Knight, yep. you know, you either die a hero or live long enough to be seen as a villain. Oh oh, exactly that's it. Like I feel like the the point about CM Punk is right. Mm. He's in his point of view, he's responding to all the drama that yep. happened, right? That yep. it must be ha- must have been pent up, you know, all this nonsense that Hangman started up and all that. But his biggest mistake was he responded, right? Mm. And he just wanted to blow the lid wide open. When I was listening back to the scrum, right, nobody prompted him or asked him about Coke Cabana. He started that shit on his own. Like, okay, I guess we're going to jump right into it. We really have forgotten all about the stuff that happened, huh? SmackDown, Raw, like, never mind, huh? Even- yeah, we'll get... Dive right into it, I think. We yeah, uh, even Dynamite. Okay, Um. here's the thing. Like, just, you know, taking a, a seven days away from the whole incident and everything, right? Now that yeah. I look back and I have had time to let it sink in, right? And as somebody, look, as much as you want to say I hate the Young Bucks, you know, I, I don't like the way they wrestle, right? Yeah. Um, I don't think they are 100% at fault here, but mm-hmm. I don't think they are blameless as well at the end of the day right all three parties and this is going to be the most pr cop out you want to say it's a cop out answer from mr young fine but all of them have blame tony khan i believe has the biggest blame to bear here okay let's start talking about all the reasons why they all should be blamed because i got a lot (laughs) okay okay um let's start with our favorites the 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 elite the yes elite elite. beat your meat whatever the hell their theme song is uh look they have had this reputation. And even if you don't follow the dirt sheets and whatnot, right? And you 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 know follow the Young Bucks elite uh, narrative, right? It's yep. quite obvious, you know, the whole New Japan thing. That whole chip on their shoulder when it comes to pro wrestling. And then all of a sudden, there's this guy who's giving them all the money, hiring all their friends. I mean, look, everybody that they brought in is one of their friends. This whole Colt Gabbana thing was because of them. And then Colt Gabbana... Like, let's face it, has he been used for anything? No, absolutely not. To say that, oh, he got fired because CM Punk said so is kind of dumb. I don't know where that rumor came from. Now, here's the problem. CM Punk assumes that it was the Young Bucks or the Elite that put out that rumor, right? But let's be real here. His contract came up. There was no way Tony Khan was going to renew him. So the Young Bucks yeah. went to bat for him, got him a contract at ROH. But somehow the narrative came out that CM Punk was the cause of it. Uh, yeah. Let's be real. He would not have survived if not for his friends, the Young Bucks. He wasn't lighting up AEW as part of the Dark Order. He wasn't even like the main guy in Dark, o- Dark Order. Bro, he was never even around. He was on Dark or Elevation yeah. or whatever the case may be, right? Yeah. He is much better suited as like a hometown guy that appear as like a jobber, like yeah. a known jobber to fight in the Chicago area if they ever go down that yeah. town. Yeah. But like uh, you know how they made Brooklyn Brawler like a jobber for the stars, but he's yeah. well known and very popular. Yeah. I felt like Kokena was at that level. Yeah. And then you look at the way Young Bucks have booked themselves as a tag team in AEW's history, right? And it yeah. becomes very clear that they don't want to give FTR the rub or they don't want to have their third final match or, you know, and they've constantly tried to book themselves into positions where they are the feature act, but then they realize they are not. So, you know, hey, let's bring back Kenny Omega. Let's have our own little three person. It's it's very obvious that once the big boys came in, their position started shrinking, started shrinking, started shrinking. And so, thus the, the whispers and the whisper campaigns. No, the the thing is, like, they legitimately had a reason to book the third match in the series. Yep. And it could have main evented all out. You know, no one would have better than I. Like, yep. Young Bucks FTR 3 would have been a marquee match. Mm-hmm. And they would have still gotten that spotlight. Yep. And they would have put over, like, a, a, a bigger tag team. And there's no shame in losing to FTR at this point in time. Yep. But from, from the reports that came out was that they scrapped that in uh, in favor of like a storyline that they said was like oh this is a much bigger storyline what was that storyline Kenny Omega coming back winning the trio's title Roll so I. it it might be in their eyes like oh yeah this is a bigger story because Kenny Omega haven't been seen in a long time mm-hmm. but I just feel that they very 
misguided lah in their own world lah. <laughs> I I don't know if misguided is the word. I honestly believe that they've drank their own Kool Aid, and yeah, maybe you're right. They believe so strongly that oh, the elite coming back. This is the bigger like. But look at who they've sort of like buried, right? FTR, Red Dragon, just yeah. just teams that were you know that had the potential to succeed, but no, because of them, they even, they never did. Even the whole Dark Order, like. Yeah. Them facing Dark Order in the finals. Like, I know they want to tell the story of like Hangman Page, right? Over mm. there. But I never seen anything like they did they, they cut a promo, nothing on nope. like uh dynamite leading up to explain that or even revisit that. Bro, it's all their friends. You notice it's the Dark Order, their friends, Hangman is their friend, it's just one big friend group. So yeah, they they carved out this whole um division, the trios division for themselves. Which actually, honestly, I'm like, okay. Fine, let them go and deal with their nonsense as long as we get the other good stuff. And if you like that sort of trio stuff, if you like the Young Bucks, then fine. It's like a buffet. You get a bit of everything, right? The, yeah. Then you know, the two shall not meet until maybe further down when they build uh, a better storyline. Like, can you imagine the dream match CM Punk versus Kenny Omega? Obviously, yeah. that's not going to happen. And then you can spin off of that. CM Punk and FTR versus Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks. Holy shit! Like, you yeah. have years of incredible storylines to tell, but, yeah. Honestly, that that feels a lot like, you know, Heart Foundation against, like, DX or, like, yeah. Nation, you know? Yeah. Um, it's clear both don't like each other, both have rivalry, both have differences, but, you know, they can make magic in the ring if they can set that aside. Look, at the end of the day, as much as Shawn Michaels was a bit of a dick, Back in the day, right? And then, yep. you know, Bret Hart was a very serious guy. He wouldn't take shit. So he would, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, don't, I, want, I don't want to say he's like a man's man or whatever. Like, but, you know, he just very, he was very blunt. But they were still professional and they made it work in the ring. Yeah, so like they you drew money. Can't, mm. they can't fault like Bret Hart, uh, his professionalism. Even Shawn Michaels, right? He... Cry baby, cry baby, why, why, why? But when the bell rings, right, yeah. fuck, that guy still can go and he will still put over the people that he fight again. So even it, even Edge and Matt, Matt Hardy made it work. Yeah, okay. You see, uh, if Edge and Matt Hardy can make it work, I don't see why anyone else can't make it work. Like this feels super petty compared to Edge and Matt mm. Hardy, uh, you know? Exactly. Well, here's the thing though. Then we have the whole situation of the personalities that we're dealing with here, right? So okay. Um Young Bucks. Wait, ah. be- before that, right, I wanted to just do a quick plug yeah. because I actually wrote about this topic oh. bro, on Sports Kida, bro. So if you that... guys want to check out uh, Foreign Sports Kida profile, I wrote this article that says three reasons why Kenny Omega the Young Bucks should be fired from AEW and two reasons why not. Oh, so there's I... actually one more to fire them, ah. Yeah, I, I already like, you know, lay it all out, like, like play all the cuts on the line, Is you know. Is it? Okay. Yeah, and, okay, so, I... but... Go ahead. Sorry, the what? Yeah, one of the biggest things that I wrote was the fact that beyond all else, right? I know it's a figurehead title, but they are still EVPs. Yeah, and I think that leads very well into. I guess this is this is the argument against the Young Bucks. Okay. Yeah. Look, you have a problem with CM Punk. CM Punk did what he did. He went out there, ran his mouth, insulted everybody. And even if the Young Bucks are innocent, let's say, for the sake of argument, the Young Bucks never spread any rumors. So they're hot, they're pissed off, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, hello. You are an EVP. You are a professional. What you should have done is gone to Tony Khan, said, let's have a sit-down meeting and let's hash things out. Do it backstage. Not go to CM Punk's locker room. You know the guy is fuming. He just freaking let it all out. You go in there. There's uh, the dog, Larry. And then, you know, you go in as a big group. It's not like one fellow went. No, it's all three of them went. You know, um, apparently A-Steel, A-Steel's wife was there as well. So... This was a horrible decision by executives. The problem is your executives. It's not like Bret Hart going to Shawn Michaels. They are both wrestlers, employees, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like Triple H right now got a problem with somebody in NXT. Then he go walk in with his like team and posse, you know? Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, it's unprofessional, right? Mm-hmm. Secondly, it kind of makes you wonder what exactly is their role as EVPs? Like what is their official title? We, are they even acting their jobs? Yeah, we all know they are not. They are just the like, fake titles. They are still, you know, just kids play on the playground. Lah. It's like the kid who never earned the prefect title now acting like he power trip. That's why it is. Yeah, so it's tough. Like, okay. It's like you give a person who is 
they are great at DIY stuff. They're great at self promotion for themselves. Mm. But have they ever actually promoted anyone beyond them? You know. Yeah. Or, <laughs> so who say it's okay? They don't need advice too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, okay. Honestly, that line is really literally the line that set off everything. Yeah, I mean, Hank, really, you know, like, it's quite obvious. Like, as much as we want... Remember, we were singing Hangman's praise at one point, right? Yeah. In terms of, yeah. oh, this is a young, young up-and-coming guy. He's a cowboy with deep thoughts. Apparently, he bringing deep thoughts so deep that he don't need any advice. To go out and say, with a locker room with Arn Anderson, with Jake the Snake, with... Chris Jericho with uh, CM Punk to say, oh, don't need any advice. Ah. Wow. You immediately know the mentality of this group already. Honestly, like, okay, I don't think Stone Cold or The Rock, right, even at the height of the Attitude Era, right, yeah. they never talked to Pat Patterson. Yeah. They never sat down with, like, you know, um, people Brisco. from the past generation, Briscoe, uh, even talked to, like, Undertaker. Like, yeah. even The Rock and Stone Cold, they still hmm. even talk to Undertaker as a senior, you know, like yeah. for advice and tough things of that nature. So does the AEW locker room need wrestlers caught? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> no, they just need Undertaker's Kane, Stone Cold all to come in and whoop all their asses. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Shadow, what's up? Thanks for joining the stream, man. How are you doing? Shadow Yo. says, cannot compare. Triple H will bring in a sledgehammer. They're comparing the figureheads, i.e. in this case, Tony Khan lah. Yeah, that's true. Hey, shout out to our Patreon, Yo. Uh, the Shadows, and as you can see, everything on our banner below there, uh, it's all our Patreons as well. So if you want to support us and let you keep this conversation going, please consider pledging your support, guys. Absolutely. Link is in the description. But okay, back to the Young Bucks. Look, there are many points against them, right? Whether they spread the rumors or not, they are EVP status. Yeah? Um, mm -hmm. The fact that, look... Honestly, in terms of performance, lah, if you like that stuff, you like that stuff. But what engaging, incredible storylines have they been a part of in the past two, three years? Name, name me one. Bro, I'll do you one better. Mm. When was the last heartfelt, gut-wrenching promo that the Young Bucks cut in the ring? Bro, promo? Promo? They only know how to do the Cutler Cam shit. Bro, you didn't realize something? This is something mm. I noticed, you know? They only always cut their uh, like promos are uh, all backstage. Yep. They never do promos in front of the crowds or as or a lot of it lah. They yeah. they almost exclusively do all their backstage vignettes all taped. Why uh? Why uh? It's clear they do not know how to handle a live mic lah. <sighs> and, and then you got Kenny Omega who goes out there after Dynamite is done and rambles on the bus that comes some cat piss weird comparing the fans to cats. Uh, pff, whatever. Okay. It's tough, you know, because like I've seen him mm. in New Japan where he had the mic and he like cutting promos against like Tanahashi or like Bro, he Okada. cutting promos against people who can't speak English. <laughs> of course, well, he's going to be good. Yeah, like, he comes across <laughs> as confident and being able to hold himself, hold his own on the mic. But like, you know, like it's a game. It's like, okay, you're in the minor leagues. Yeah. You know, you think you're the best. And then suddenly you are now in the Premier League and like, holy shit, everyone's faster, yeah. much better, more equipped than you. It's, I think it's that, that's the scenario right now. Yeah. yeah. And also, if you look at the whole situation when you had, okay, you had the Young Bucks and the Elite Universe, and this is like quite obvious why Cody created his own universe as well. You know, the Cody verse with his guys. And now, now it's all starting to become very, very clear as to, okay, this group, they just want to play by themselves. They don't want to take advice from nobody. And it's detrimental to the business at the end of the day because Tony Khan is there trying to make money. Right and they, grow AEW. They don't want to. They don't want to play with other people. I guess it's fine. They just like the fact that there's uh, Akong who is very happy to give them money, give them money. But wait, now that there are people with actual good advice and good ideas, now that they are get sort of their sh share of the pie getting smaller, they're not happy. They got the defensive la. Like I, I, the issue is right. If they don't want to like work with other people. Um, mm. Like, okay, like I, I'm just going to wrestle among my friends. See, that's fine. But if other people don't want to work with them and then they, they you ostracize them, you're like, okay, since you don't want to work or be mm. part of our gang 
or like do stupid shit with us, then you don't have matches with us. Then then I feel that is like very, very like um you're going against what's your, your job supposed to be as an EVP, you're supposed to manage all the talents, right? See, yeah, and that comes back to the whole being an EVP thing. If you are an EVP, you are supposed to be making decisions for the company and not for your group of friends. So at the very least, uh, I know they've been suspended, quote unquote, right? At the mm-hmm. very least, strip them of their executive vice president name their title on, on, they, yeah the, the quote unquote their professional title gone they are just restless honestly I think that's the best for the best of the company yep. um, I don't think they will change their sway I mean they will still have, be like the you know they be the orang atas you know the people person of influence sure but don't give them a title because I don't think they are good representatives for the company no. no don't give them a title nor give them any booking power they should be told what to do as opposed to you know, telling people what to do. Because let's face it, it's quite obvious, right? The people that they brought in, meh. The people that uh, have been brought in that could be main event stars that have not been pushed as well. And then that's the other group. Actually, just randomly, I watched Rampage, right? And mm. I I saw a, 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 a Miro promo. And then okay. I was like, I think uh, the whole time he's been talking about God, right? I think God is Tony Khan. I think, this, I think this whole time uh, he's been referring to Tony Khan. You know, why have you forsaken me? What have I done wrong? Why am I, you know what I mean? If bro, you go that's back, deep, bro. Bro, that is go, deep. I was like, wait a minute. I think he's talking about the wrestling gods. He's not, you know, like, why have you, like, I will go back to my beautiful wife, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. I think uh, if you go back and listen to all of Miro's um, promos and just replace God with Tony Khan, it makes all the sense in the world. Holy shit, okay, because when he started out, he called himself God's favorite champion. Because that was when he was a TNT title. And then when he lost it, he called himself God's forsaken champion. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly, towards the end, now he's like, he hates his God, right? Yeah, because God <laughs> has forsaken him. What have you done with me? You give me a bit, but you take away so much. Because now he's literally lost fighting House of Black. Don't know he's doing what, right? In, yeah, man. Uh, talk about God not even including him in the tournament of champions. I'm like, oh my God, he's talking about Tony Khan. This whole time, Miro has been promoing against Tony Khan right under our noses. Bro, that is like amazing storytelling that is true. I, okay. Bro, it's, go back and listen to every single Miro promo. It makes sense now. Okay, petition for um, like Miro, right? One day on Dynamite, right? He just comes in the middle of the ring. Mm. It's time I address you, God, <laughs> man to man. But I'm, I, I'm sure somebody has made this connection before. Come on, it can't be just me at this moment. Yeah. But, but, but speaking of the fact that you watch Rampage, which is of course a very, very unique and rare thing. It's like the blue moon, huh, Mr. Young? Bro, I was uh, doing laundry. I was bored. I watched Finish Smackdown, which I thoroughly enjoyed. See, here's the difference, right? When I was doing laundry, I yep. actually realized I stopped folding my clothes while Smackdown was happening because I really wanted mm-hmm. to watch that six-man tag with Sheamus nice. and, and Imperium, right? And then yep. when Rampage comes on, I'm like, okay, I was very productive <laughs> because I was skipping everything. Uh, okay, okay, but did you... Pay attention long enough to watch Dex versus Claudio for the ROH title. <sighs> yes, and here's the thing: just make ROH the Friday show. The ramp, just re- get rid of Rampage. It's so obvious they are dumping, like, whatever they don't have time for on Dynamite on the Rampage, and then let them build storylines there. Because God damn it, man, come on! Like Dex versus Cesaro. I mean Claudio. That was a banger. But yeah, with zero build, zero reason. Okay, so so like we we're gonna move a bit forward. Like okay, yeah, we're yeah. gonna jump in there. Clearly, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, this is an unstructured podcast. But yeah, the the fact that you know uh, they held a talent meeting right before Dynamite, and yeah. you heard right who's gonna who was the Taikong in that meeting? Uh, Jericho, Moxley, yeah. and Danielson, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they talk about unity and getting everyone on board, blah blah blah, like a fresh restart for mm. AEW. Don't you realize that? Every single match or like every single story going into Dynamite and Rampage felt like the people that wasn't causing any drama, like the real yep. workhorses, yep. which includes Claudio and Dex, you know, yep. giving them a random match. But also every single match on Dynamite felt very focused on like moving the brand forward as well. Do yep. you think so? It's it seems like a okay, um there's all this bad news, bad juju. Let's just like okay, let's move on, let's quickly like build towards something else. And of course Tony Khan loves tournaments, so he threw together a tournament. I didn't hate the idea of a tournament. The problem is we've seen way too many tournaments. If 
you didn't have 10,000 tournaments before this, this would be exciting right now, right? But the fact and that I, it's another tournament, it's like, oh, here we go. He, exactly, that's my exact ratio. You know when he announced it was a tournament? Yeah. I literally rolled my eyes. Yeah, like, like, oh, okay. Yeah, right? Look, at the end of the day, uh, the Shadows is three WWE guys being locker room leaders. Ha, ha, ha. But it doesn't matter where they're from. If they are the right choice, then it bodes well for the business, for AEW, right? I don't know about John Moxley, la, you know <laughs> you, you know my thoughts about him. To be, to uh, be fair, Triple H and uh, Undertaker, when they were local leaders on, in WWE, technically they're WCW guys, right? Yeah, exactly, right? Um, so, I mean, at the end of the day, it's what the company needs to move forward, right? And, yeah. <sighs> okay, let's pull it back now yeah. to this whole situation. Are we done with the Young Bucks? Okay, so we've already argued the case for and again. So, f- why I think... The Elite is not 100% at fault. Is, uh, wait, did we, no, did no. we establish why they, they are? Were? Yes, they are not 100% at Well, we will establish that when we talk about CM Punk. But they are 100% not. Eh? Okay, I'm using too many percentages. I don't want to confuse people. <laughs> they are not blameless here. Whether or not they. Start, if they started rumors, and I mean, all, um, all signs point to yes, they're best friends with, you know, Dave Meltzer and all that kind of shit, right? Yeah. So, but even if they didn't do that, now let's take that off the table. They acted in a unprofessional manner dealing yeah. with talent. They are EVPs. Say they should have done better. Uh, they should have known better. They shouldn't have started the confrontation in the first place. And plus, I'm, their booking in the past couple of years has been atrocious. And their wrestling style sucks, but that is just my subjective view. Okay, okay, bro. If nothing else, right? Okay, even mm. if shit goes down and CM Punk gets fired or blah, blah, blah. Right, I yeah. love the fact that somebody called out the elite and say they can't even manage a damn target. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. thought it was fucking hilarious. So let's move on to CM Punk, right? You know what All this smacks right. off? This smacks of somebody who has been eating shit, eating shit, eating shit, looking at things. I'm sure his peers, maybe people like FTR, have been feedbacking to him because they probably see him as the locker, le- uh, locker room leader because yep. he's a money drawer, right? He's probably like, you know what? If Tony's not going to do anything about it, I will do something about it because I don't give a shit whether I get fired or not. So in a way, good on him. But the way he did it in a media scrum, like, look, as if if he picked up the phone and he called Tony Khan, we need to have a chat. As if Tony Khan won't say, okay, okay, I listen. Right? Yeah, but clearly he will. He will lick his... Okay, anyway, boots, I was, boots. I was, you yeah, lick his yeah. boots, bro. Lick his boots, yes, you lick his boots. So I'll stop that. My, my point is CM Punk could have done that instead of come out at the press con and just made this huge, gigantic scene. Do you know the story that came out a couple of weeks ago that like some AW talent wanted to walk out and then Tony Khan had to beg him to stay? Yeah. I'm 100% sure it's CM Punk. Yeah, you think so? <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I really think so because I feel like CM Punk, he's not scared to walk out, right? He yeah. has proven that if he's done really shit, he'll just walk out. Yeah, he don't care. He don't care. Like, and here's the other thing too. I feel like the reason that he did blow up, quote unquote, at the press thing, press scrum, is because CM, uh, what's his face? TK didn't do anything about it. That's the If TK in, instantly did something about it, he wouldn't have done that. Yeah, okay. He he held on to this grudge for three months for Hangman Page, right? Yeah. For him going to business for himself. Yeah. It wasn't resolved. He said it in the scrum itself. Yeah. Like, we are way beyond the point of apologizing because there, there wasn't any resolution. That's why he had to do this, mm. right? So what happened in that three months in between? Why didn't there wasn't there any mediation between Tony Khan yep. and the two parties? Uh, the only thing that I saw happen was Hagman slid down the cut and like he wasn't really pushed during this period. Mm-hmm. But I still feel like it wasn't resolved clearly because if CM Punk came back and had bad blood, yep. that means what Tony Khan does as a guy who doesn't like confrontation he just avoids the subject and sits under the rug, lah. Isn't yeah. that what happened? Yeah, he's probably <laughs> like, okay, lah, just, you know, uh, everyone just quiet down. Don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. You know what happens when you don't talk about an issue? It festers. Everybody, mm. this is a relationship bit of advice as well. If you don't confront the issue, it will fester and fester until it explodes like a volcano and then CM Punk walks out on you. Yeah, I mean, okay, as someone who has had experience falling out with people, right? Ah. Uh, there's always two sides to the story. So, like, yeah. even if I feel like I was a victim in this situation, it's not 100% the real thing that happened. It's just what I felt, right? Mm. So, I, that's why I can relate to CM Punk to a certain extent. Like, I, <laughs> I know 
he feels victimized in this situation and i don't think it's wrong that he feels victimized because clearly the evidence suggests that he's being screwed whether yep. it's by evp hangman page tony khan uh, even Colt Cabana, I guess. <laughs> That's yeah. a long, old well, okay. story. Wow. Uh, do you think that he's... See, I don't want to say he's being arrogant about it as well because he knows he's a money draw, right? And he has the proof. He uh, he was one of the reasons they were getting to the first million dollar gate or something like that. Yeah. And yeah. this this was the match. He referenced this against um, Hangman Page. Now, if you can't trust your opponent because this is right before that pay-per-view match, how can you... Tr- if you can't trust him to, to not go into business for himself, how can you trust him in the ring? Like, there is that unspoken sort of trust between wrestlers, performers, right? And I yeah. think in a lot of ways, Hangman Page broke that trust by going out there and going into business for himself. And you know what's the craziest part? Like, I actually took the time to watch that promo again before mm. Double or Nothing. Yeah. I watched it again and again. I try, I try to see, like, the part where he really went to business for himself. Yeah. Honestly, wasn't well done. It felt no, like... No, because he was shit on the mic. He, yeah, he, it, he was clunky as fuck about it. Yeah, he, he felt very, like, passive-aggressive, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I, I look and observe CM Punk's reaction. There mm. was, like... One or two seconds where he, his eyes changed like, eh, is this part of the script? Yeah. But then, right, he actually had a chance to respond directly after that promo, you know? Uh-huh. And he said in, right, in, as a retort to what he said, the, the going to the business part, right? He just said, I don't know why you're so mad. I don't know why you have such a big problem with me. But, you know, um, I'm telling you right now that I'll be the champion. So you will shake my head. Like, literally, he saved the promo and he kept it back to a professional line. CM Punk would have fucked him up on the spot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I, I mean, yeah he was being is, professional. He tried to keep it to get yeah. after the fact. There is no doubt that CM Punk could have, with a live mic, fucked him up and, and made uh, Hangman look like a complete ass. Which, you know, ultimately he did lah, by calling him out and, you know, Hangman didn't come out. Lah. Um, but here's, here's the thing. Why didn't Tony Khan, after that incident, do something? Because clearly in CM Punk's mind, either Tony Khan didn't do anything or didn't do enough. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And the thing is, okay, let, let, we're gonna use the Hogan and Stone Cold comparison. Okay. I'm not, I'm not saying that CM Punk is fucking Hogan or like Stone Cold level. I hope, I hope CM Punk is not fucking uh, Hogan. No, but the thing is, <laughs> I have to reference Hot Hogan because I feel mm. every top star got some sort of rub. They got yeah. some sort of, uh, what do you call it? Um, stroke. They got stroke around here, Sway. correct? Yeah. Remember all the multiple times Hulk Hogan said, this doesn't work for me, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. And, and, and for, you know, like, he doesn't want to, like, take a job to someone, he doesn't want to work with someone, blah, blah, blah. Mm. And Bishop went with Hogan because Hogan was a top drawing star, so you can't make your top drawing star unhappy, right? Yeah. Even Stone Cold had this scenario. Do you remember? I don't know. This is definitely your time, but I don't know whether you know this story. Uh, Stone Cold didn't want to work with Mark Merrow. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Because he took a powerbomb from Sable mm-hmm. and like, I think they were supposed to go into a program, IC title yeah. program or whatever it is and then he told Vic Smithman like, I ain't gonna work with a guy who just uh, got beaten up by a girl. Yeah. No, he's protecting his uh, his name, value. Yes, he is quote-unquote doing it for himself but it also makes sense. You know, he knows that he needs to keep his name value high. Yeah, I cannot be beat or made to look weak against a guy who just took a powerbomb from Sable. I mean, it, saw, it makes sense. There are reasons for that. We saw this at the start of AEW. But remember last time mm-hmm. when AEW first started, the EVPs were too generous. Yeah. Omega keep losing the first year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, fucking Cody Rhodes keep putting everyone over. And then we were like, hey, you guys are the top stars. It's yeah. okay to be as established as a top star first. Yeah. Then you can build out the people. Because even though yeah, you have clout from other companies, you haven't built up your clout in this company yet. Yeah. Yeah. So I think CM Punk was doing the right thing in the sense that yeah, like, he's calling out Hangman Page, like, can you fucking, like, do something about him? And I think maybe what Tony Khan did was de-push him a bit. Yeah, well, to be honest, de-push him, yeah, but he just kind of, you know, let the whole rumour thing go. I think what really pissed CM Punk the most was the rumour. And we all know that Colt Gabbana is, like, his trigger spot. Like, you want to trigger CM Punk? Colt Gabbana is the name. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I think the reason why the whole scrum started, right? Mm. It's not... Okay, he brought it up. I know why he brought it up. Because he recognized one of the media journalists. Yep. His name is Nick Hausen. 
Yeah. And apparently he does comedy together with Coke Cabana, so he wait, knows wait. that they know is each he, other. Is he the cousin of Dan Housen? <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> um, uh, but but he's a he's a managing editor of a very famous wrestling website, uh, uh. Wrestling Inc. Mm, mm, okay. Yeah. So like this guy came and straight away started asking him a question, right? And I so I did some digging. You know, I really got a lot of fita. I don't know how I do it, mm. but he he was actually at the court case of like the between um Colt Cabana and CM Punk against Dr. Aman in WWE. Ah. This guy was actually in the court attending and watching the trial. And when they both won, he interviewed both Colt and CM Punk. Mm-hmm. So like they know each other for sure. So yep. Punk knows that he is on good terms with Colt still. Yeah, that's why he called him out like, "Hey, you still do comedy with him? Are you still his oh. friend?" Oh, ah, so that's the trigger. Like, okay, so now let's make the case against CM Punk. Hey, Wonder Boy, it's good to see you. By the way, thanks for dropping by the stream. My we, PW represent. Yeah, we were talking about the fallout. So, okay, CM Punk could have not brought it up. He mm. like like you said, nobody asked him about. Coco Banner, he just brought it up on his own. Obviously, yeah. this has been stewing in him. Um, and we mentioned earlier, he could have brought this up to Tony Khan and delivered Tony Khan an ultimatum. Look, do something about these pricks or I will walk. But yes, I guess, yeah, maybe Tony Khan didn't want to fire them. And may, may, to be fair, maybe CM Punk is telling Tony Khan to fire his EVPs and he's just not going to, you know, bend over backwards like that. Like, mm, uh, uh, you know, I'll see how, I'll see how. And then now, CM Punk basically puts Tony Khan in a position where he, well, kind of fucks everybody. You know, you know I, I wouldn't put it, past it, put, past, put it past Punk to do that. Like, he will probably spend the first couple of months, like the year there. He's like, you know what? I know what's the cancer in this company. It's yep. the elite. Fire them. I think I can teach you guys how to draw money better. Yeah. Follow me. Now, and, w- whether yeah. you agree with that or not, is a different story like you know it's something else but you know um yeah that's probably exactly what happens and i think jim Cornette made a very good comparison to okay cm punk and the elite versus sable and sunny okay uh, he used oh, okay he used much more colorful words i will uh pg it up a little <laughs> bit but what he said was sunny is a a dude but she will do it right in your face she's a upfront dude and you will know and she'll claim that she's a dude as well right yeah. so that's cm punk he may be a dick but he's a dick in front of her face and there's no surprises meanwhile sable is a backstabbing dude <laughs> and yeah. he, they, they will do things behind your back and they'll never admit to being a dude and that's <laughs> the elite and i was like holy shit that's a very good comparison i love that analogy i listened to that particular quote mm-hmm. and you know what can we be honest here? Yeah. We've worked with people like this. Oh, I, bro. I, bro. Don't get me started, bro. I might <laughs> go on my own CM Punk press scrum rant, okay? Bro, that's your trigger. That's your trigger. That's, that's my trigger, place. yeah. Look, okay. Not just my workplace. Not just your workplace. Uh, everybody here in chat. I mean, doesn't matter what field of work you work in, right? There are some people who are assholes, but they are assholes in front of your face. They're, they're just them. And then they are the gossipy, backstabby assholes. And if you are neither of those, then uh, you're just like us just caught in between. You'd be like a Miro or a FTR. Just like, fuck, we just want to work. You know what? Um, honestly, the lesser of two evil is an upfront asshole. You yeah. know what you're dealing with. Yes, you yes. have no surprises. And like, you know what? If you actually can get along with an upfront asshole, right? Mm. You know that he'll be loyal as fuck. Yeah, yeah, you, you actually shit, uh, like a few names actually popped into my head right now. I, I shall not mention who, you know, both in current company, previous company as well. Which, but that's. Which radio DJ? We see, come tell us. No, 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 I don't want to say, I don't want to say, I don't say, I don't say, okay? <clears throat> okay, um, okay. <laughs> but, but, uh, if you want me to say, uh, please like the uh, stream. If we get more than 15 likes, then I'll say it by the end of the stream. No, no, no. If you follow us on Patreon, we still ah. will do a secret a clubhouse hey, of all don't the... Don't la, <laughs> Don't la, Don't like that. No, no. I'm uh, okay, kidding. Okay, I'm okay. kidding. Okay, um, but, but to, to be honest, to be honest, mm. the reason why I say that, right, I feel like assholes, right? Like <laughs> generally upfront assholes, right? I think they are people who have been hurt or like, they, like this is getting deep, uh, bro. Right? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. they just be very disappointed in life, right? And they're like, you know mm. what? I, fuck, fuck all these humans. I just fuck all these people. Yeah. But actually, right, they... They, they actually have a lot of capacity to love and be loyal and be like they will fight for you to the end of the, 
of time. But you just need mm. to earn their trust, right? Right, right. I feel that is so much more like, isn't it better to earn something that is very high and then once you get it, you know that they are like, you know, they got your back for life. Mm. As opposed to someone from the get-go, they are like, oh, so nice, so accommodating, blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly you start hearing stories like, oh, you know, actually this guy, right, he talked this about you. Oh, he talked, I'm like, what the fuck, yeah? you know what I mean? So, <laughs> Sally says there's nine likes, by the way, six more, let's go. Hey, stop it, like, y'all, uh, just damn gossip monger, no, basket. Uh, Oh, yeah, I know okay. what's happening. I know exactly what's happening right now. Some of you are creating new accounts to, just to like the podcast, right? Just to like the uh, stream. Hey, don't just create likes lah. Go follow us on Patreon. <laughs> That's the most important. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. But sorry, yeah, go ahead. No, but but I, I, I feel... Like, that's the thing about CM Punk. Um, and I've watched his documentary in WWE. He said that, mm. you know, uh, do you remember the, there's this one time Joey Mercury talked about how CM Punk paid for his house? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and like CM Punk helped out a lot of like uh, wrestlers, you know, who are going through the scene and all that. He actually put over Seth Rollins in FCW uh, mm. or the early uh, NXT. Uh, when he was still WWE champion, he actually went down to NXT and fought or had an encounter with um, Seth Rollins when he was NXT champion. Even though he didn't need to do that, it was his off day he did that mm, to mm. put the rock. And even when Dean Ambrose was still Dean Ambrose in FCW, CM Punk came down and put him over. So, like, he's the kind of guy, right, that if mm. you if, if you win his trust, right, he will go to bed for you. But and then I, when you break his trust, wow, he will hate you. Like, Colt Cabana lah. Colt Cabana, even Hans Wagner. You know, I heard the story about Hans Wagner. What? Appar- Apparently, Hans Vogel gave out CM Punk's phone number unsolicited to someone else, like some uh, reporter or somebody who wanted Bo- a favor. Bodo lah. Yeah, bodo lah. I mean, like, wh- why would you do that? Like, he he, he thought, like, I thought he thought it was cool, blah, blah, blah. And then CM Punk blocked him. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so don't cross him lah. But the thing is, I feel like I would trust somebody like that more than someone like the elite who's like, oh, you know, you my buddy, buddy, I'll help you out. But then I'm going to fuck other people for... Like, behind your back or something. You know, like, I just feel like the elite is the type of friends, right, who, like, the moment something better comes out, they just drop them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, okay, we can't confirm any of this, obviously, because we don't work there, but it does seem like the case. Anyway, what we can confirm is what we saw, right? CM Punk lost his shit. Couldn't take anymore. Meanwhile, Tony Khan was sitting right next to him. Now, CM Punk fans, I actually know, um, Tony Punk, uh, Tony Punk, Tony Khan <laughs> apologists are saying, well, you know, hey, no, 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 sorry, sorry. The uh, People who want to defend, I, I need to get my thoughts together, hang on. So there's wait, one wait, group, there's one group of people saying he just let him talk. Um, then there's another group of people saying, no, 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 look at Tony Khan's face. You can see he's very uncomfortable. He did not agree because some people are like, oh yeah, Tony Khan was nodding. Bro, basket. Samuel, hold on. What, what, what did he say? What did he say? No, no. Uh, Tovakin, uh, we, we just got a new sub, by the way, on the YouTube oh, page, okay. right? And it's Samuel okay. Toh. And I know Tovakin's real name is Samuel. So stop it. <laughs> you are putting fake likes <laughs> just to get the tea. My God. Oh, I see yeah, I okay. see right through you. I know what you are doing, okay? Basket, oh, no? God, anyway, anyway. Okay. Um, my point is this. If you look back at the video and I have never <laughs> watched a press scrum as much as this one, okay? Yeah. You look at his face. He's like, oh shit, oh shit. He's nodding, not because he's agreeing. He, he's just nodding because he's a very um, accommodating person. But you can tell from his, his face, he's like, oh fuck, oh fuck. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? <sighs> it's the same as like, you know, when uh, a guy who's going through a very stressful situation, he doesn't know what to do, but he just laughs. Start yeah, laughing. yeah, yeah. He, he was out of his depth. Quite honestly, completely out of his depth. So, okay, yeah. have we stated the case for and against Punk? We have stated the case for why he's that. that. We have stated the case against, I think, maybe because we've said that he should have been more professional. He should have called it out in the media scrum. Yeah, that was his mistake, right? Yeah, once again, he did something as holy, but was it justified? Maybe it was, but he should he have done it the way he did? You know, there you go. So that's the for I, and against, right? I think he's he's too human. He's too much like Batman. He can't be Superman. He can't be, rise above the head. He can't do a John Cena. <laughs> Clearly, he doesn't <sighs> have the mental fortitude to do it. Mm. No, and, but, but that's why he's such a great promo because he talks right from the heart. 
Yeah, I, I feel like Randy Orton is in the same vein. I think yeah. if, if Randy Orton was in the same situation, he'll probably fuck all these elite people. By, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? That's uh, why the media scrum might just be the worst idea in AEW's history, as much as we love it. Like, he's, Tony Khan, that is, is obviously catering to the, the wrestling media, trying to get his company, you know, exciting news. Because that's the whole point, right? It's to cater to the wrestling press, like, who, who love him. Honestly, keep it, bro. I, I tell you, if this this media scrum, right, is like entertainment that even if it's mm. going to be the the demise of AEW, right, I think they should just capture <laughs> the whole ship burning to the ground to <laughs> keep this, you so, know, okay. a thing. The idea of the press con already is them cock to begin with. You have people who hate each other in blood feuds going on these press conferences talking about how they love working with the person they just bloodied up, which kills the entire momentum. I get it. Oh, y'all are so smart. You're, oh, this is all a work. But come on, la. You know, like, it, no, at, no, least no, try no. To, at least try to keep up the illusion that these people hate each other, right? You know, like, who, like CM Punk was smart enough to do it when what? they asked him about MJF. Oh, this Tony Khan just wants me to work with pricks. Because he realizes he probably likes working with MJF because they had an incredible feud. But to sell that story, because he's about to go into a feud with MJF, he can't mm -hmm. be like, oh yeah, I love the way he debuted. Uh, it's good to see him back. Then they would kill his whole feud with MJF. It's dumb. That's what Chris Jericho did, by the way. <laughs> yeah, which, yeah, exactly. Chris Jericho after that was like, oh yeah, we, everyone was looking forward to them fighting. He, uh, MGF even came up to me to ask me for advice. I'm like, oh my God. Didn't no, you guys feel, no. didn't, like, isn't MJF like the biggest douchebag around? And then you want to paint him as this nice guy? So the best, I maintain the best company that utilizes a press conference well is New Japan. Like New Japan uses it to further feuds. Yeah. Um, The best example of somebody utilizing the press con to like further their character it's no further than Roman Reigns. <laughs> <laughs> knowledge me. And then he actually got the reporter to say, I acknowledge you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that guy like, like you can tell he like a bit scared, right? And then he like, uh, I, I acknowledge you. And then it furthers his charisma, his aura as well. Like this guy, wah, eh, 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 he will stare you down. Eh? Don't fuck with him, yeah. And then he'll be like, oh, you damn right I do. Yeah, <laughs> then he yeah. won't <laughs> no, and that, that's perfect because, okay, the, to be fair, the WWE, they didn't know what to expect. They yeah. literally, the reporter also like, hey, I can interview these wrestlers. Uh, okay. So mm. they actually was trying to ask them like legit question. <laughs> Roman decided, nope, I'm just going to be in character. Yeah, no, but that is the way to do it. I kind of didn't like that Seth Rollins was all like, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, he tried to keep up the character for a while. Then after that, he... Let became it go, like, like he an became, ambassador. Yeah, he became Seth. Like, it's like, ah, yeah, you know. Um, okay, okay. The, the best one, my last thing, right? The best yeah. one was Jay White from Forbidden Doors Press Club. Do you remember? Uh, did he, like, just He's, f bomb he go, all the way? He go whack the, like, the bottle or, like, like oh, yeah. he couldn't put, he couldn't place the belt properly. Yeah, and yeah. he fucking whacked it and then he's like, oh, yeah, sorry, Tony Khan. But he, like, he still fucked everyone, you know? Like, yeah. he was really in the New Japan character, which works for him. Mm. I think that the press, the media scrum, right? They need to learn from this and just, they just need to not be so smart. Not, not be so, you know, oh, we are all in this club together. We are all smart fans. Just work the, the wrestling press a bit also. Lah. You know? Yeah, like maybe. your your faces, your baby faces can go out there and talk about how they love working with so-and-so, blah, 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 that kind of thing. But even then, don't bury your heels when you are out there you know, being nice and smiling and shit like that. Yeah, like I feel like CM Punk can still be like the baby face guy in Chicago mm -hmm. and fuck over, like, like he can talk shit about Moxley and I think he gave Moxley his props but in a way that feels like, okay, too hard, but, uh, like, like veterans fighting it out, now they have each other's respect. That mm -hmm. makes sense within the context of the story, right? Yeah. Um, okay, before we move on to talking about Tony Khan's <laughs> role in all of this, Shall we entertain the thought, the idea, and some people have brought it up in chat as well. Shall we entertain the thought that this may be an elaborate work? You know what? I forgot. I hope it is. Okay, look. Um, so now apparently CM Punk is injured again. So, you know, some people have said maybe they mm. are working the fact that he's injured. So there's another reason to strip him of the title, right? Mm. 
Now, the problem with that argument is, and they must know, CM Punk must know, the Young Bucks must know, Tony Khan must know that you go and do this work, you completely overshadow your other top heel coming back, which is MJF. So you're yeah. sacrificing MJF's heat for this angle, this payoff or whatever. That, that, that wasn't even a thing like two, two weeks ago, right? Yeah, exactly. So I honestly, unless they really want to fuck MJF over, I highly doubt this was a work. But I do believe that they can do what they did with MJF and they turn mm. a actual shoot into a work line in the future. Well, I mean, look at what they did on um, Dynamite, which, okay, let's give them props, right? MJF comes out and he gets a hero's welcome. And yeah. they yeah. are cheering and they knew that, I mean, uh, even Chris Jericho talked about it, right? You will come back. This is when Chris Jericho shared a little bit too much. Um, he talked to the press about how, oh yeah, you know, um, MJF came to me for advice and I told him that you will be cheered when you come back. And then he was like, but I don't want to be cheered. Like, you know, he's such a nice guy. Like, fuck, man. Anyway, um, that aside, right? So that's exactly what happened. He came back, he was cheered, but he masterfully sort of turned the crowd right back against him, which is yeah. a testament to MJF. And then they carried on with the tournament and, you know... As much as I shit on Moxley, right? The last two weeks, his promos have been not bad. I have to say. I think Moxley, when he gets serious yep. and he realized like, shit, okay, I have to carry. Because I think he always prided himself as a workhorse. Yeah. Remember, there was this one time he kind of proclaimed that he actually worked the most amount of dates in 2016 in WWE. He ran mm -hmm. himself to the ground. Right, right, right. I think he has a certain pride in that. Like He takes pride in like, mm. okay, you know what? I'm going to be... He's like Bret Hart. I'm not saying that the same talent or skill, uh, yeah. but he's like the Bret Hart mentality of I want to be a good leader for everyone and I'm going to show it by acting like it as opposed to like just saying it, you know? Yeah, then don't go to uh, GCW and do like, you know, the bullshit one is, uh, you do there. non canon uh, for him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hello, there's this thing called the internet. Everyone will see. Anyway, um, anyway, back to the whole point. I don't think this is work. This this would be a terrible idea as a work. They could have done a million and one other things, right? So yeah. now let's move on to finally Tony Khan. And at the end of the day, right? I dump at least a majority of the blame of this whole situation on him. Very simple, bro. Mm. Would Vince McMahon have even allowed it to get to this point? No, 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 you're right. You're exactly right. Look, so if you have your top talent, you know, uh, complaining about something, Vince would have done something about it or tried to placate the top talent. Uh, Tony Khan obviously is too much of a people pleaser and he talked about it in the press conference as well. Um, he used to be a bartender. I learned this about him. Ooh, like a bit of oversharing. Oh, yeah. Who, who I share that? <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah. Um, he... <sighs> He should have not let the young bucks run their own little thing. He should have honestly stopped CM Punk. He, he yeah. at the end of the day, pays the bills, right? And he, I know he's a fan. That's the problem. He's a fan. He's not a boss. He's a friend, a fan, whatever you want to say. He's just there like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. He could have done something about it. Honestly, if he really wanted to do something about it, okay, if, if I know it's hindsight, right? Mm -hmm. But if he knew CM Punk was going to start to get off the rails and stuff like that, I said that, hey, I'm sorry, cut off the mic, security, get him out there, escort him out. What? Yeah, like, like as in, like, to minimize the, the humiliation. She's going to get humiliated because he basically tell his top star to get out of the press conference, right? Yeah, yeah. But... I do get somebody like get a steel or get mm. like FT. I get his friends like hey, you know we gotta cut off your time. Yeah, we yeah. got more people like and it there because I remember Tony Khan tried to talk about something else and then suddenly CM was like you know I'm sorry to yep. keep harping on this because I'm pissed off blah 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 and then he said like yeah and like the problem is he has too much of a friendship relationship with them that he can't separate it. He can't fuck them up where he needs but, to. Bro, I don't even think it's a friendship. That's the problem. I think it's a fan. He's a fan. Mm. You know what I mean? There's a difference. If it was a friend, I dare say he would be like, hey, bro, let's not go there. Lah. Stop let's it. let's Stop show it. some respect. You, you know what I mean? I think if he were truly his on an equal... See, this is the problem. Obviously, CM Punk is on a pedestal for Tony Khan, right? And I mean, for any of us, I think if we were interviewing CM Punk, we would be like, oh, yeah, yeah, you say, you say, you're a legend, blah, 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 right? So I get it. But also at the same time, 
maybe if you had done something pre uh, previously prior, you know, you set them down. I think a lot of this has to do with getting everybody to sit down together. And, and maybe Tony can't try it, but the elite wouldn't sit down with CM Punk. I feel like CM yeah. Punk would. Of course, CM Punk is not the kind of guy who will avoid conversation or avoid yeah. topic, right? You know what's funny? Mm. I think this is the exact reason why, right, after Stone Cold, after John Cena, right, this man is like, you know what? Fuck making this company based on one top star. Yeah. I'm just going to make the company the big draw, not the, the yeah. star. Yeah. Because I think hitching the entire future Wagon. of the company on yeah. one person, you're in the women fancy of that person. What if he does, doesn't want to play ball? Yeah. No, that's 100% it. Like, you look at Conor McGregor, you look at Ronda Rousey, I'm using UFC as an example right now, right? Like Dana White, for the longest time, he hitched his wagon to names like Anderson Silva, like uh, Iceman Chuck Liddell, like Conor McGregor. And once they lose, because, you know, that sport is, quote-unquote, it's a shoot, right? So... Yeah. Uh, or once they go into business for themselves, they want to fight anymore, they become too big for their britches, then you are sort of left there with your balls hanging in the wind. Yeah, and I think UFC has suffered greatly in the mm -hmm. last couple of years because of a lack of star names. Yeah. But I feel like they should follow like sports, you know, like Manchester United, Liverpool, just because David Beckham leave. Yeah. Just because Ronaldo leave. Yeah. The, the, people are still fans of the yeah. club, not fans of the player. Yeah, I mean, some might follow them to wherever. They go Real Madrid, they might follow them to Real Madrid. But by and large, yeah, if you're a Man U fan, you're going to be a Man U fan, regardless Link. of who plays. Yeah, so like when they go through the shit times or they go mm. through the good times, you will still be there for them regardless. So yeah. I, I think because AEW is so new, they had to rely on the star names to yeah. build them up. Lah. But you already had Chris Jericho. You had John Moxley. They were built up, right? The problem is they hadn't been building up their own talent. They have some of them, but let's face it, who there, their own talent is sort of in that main event, mainstream name oh, value. Oh, man. If and they actually focus on them, they are there already. Yeah. Well, CM Punk tried to do it for MJF. Now MJF is that guy. Yeah, right? for sure. So, MJF is a star. And who built it? It was CM Punk. Who have the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega built? You tell me. The Lucha Bros. <laughs> The Dark Order. Okay. <laughs> uh, so dude. that, well, you, you know what I mean? So in terms of contribution to AEW as a whole, that's that's my big gripe about the Young Bucks. If you look at it objectively, right? at the end of the day, they weren't big enough stars to, they, they thought they were big stars. That's why they were losing left, right and center when it first started. But it didn't make anybody because they were nobody. Honestly, I think they needed the WWE run so that yep. they can legitimize whether they are top star or not. Yes, yes. As much as they say, oh, we, we made it without WWE's help, blah, blah, blah. Mm. I, I I feel like that is like their biggest script tonight as well because I don't think they will succeed in WWE. Bro, big fish, small pond. That's what they were. Now they are small fish in the big pond. Yeah, the pond that they created became super huge. They got a whale in yep. CM Punk. And it's it's not it's not even like they are the biggest star in the company right now. Like there's other bigger stars mm -hmm. in this company, so I don't think they can even outdraw. Tell me they will outdraw Brian Danielson yep. or fucking even I think Blackpool Combat Club is a more bigger draw for the company right now. Yeah, yeah. Even okay, this might be controversial. Even the Jericho Appreciation Society, <laughs> as much as we hate the stuff that they've been doing recently, right? I'm like, yeah, I think more people will know Chris Jericho. You, you, you want to know something that's crazy? It might what? be debatable, but I honestly believe it's 100% true. What? Even Orange Cassidy is a bigger star than Young Bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, it's fine. It's fine if the Young Bucks are not trying to be stars and are doing EVP stuff. But it's clear they're trying to hold on to the power and try to promote themselves as well. Have their own little division and tag titles, trio titles, blah, 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 blah. And... Therefore, you have that whole issue, which goes back to Tony Khan allowing this to happen. I think moving ahead, right? I mean, it's not all doom and gloom. I know a lot of people are like, oh, what is this? Like WCW, all the egos getting in the way, it will implode. If Tony Khan has any sense, he will look at himself and realize, okay, this is how I fucked up. Time for me to take a step back and stop playing fanboy with the millions and billions of dollars. Let people like your Arn Andersons, your, I guess Tony Schiavone, he's the head guy in um, talent relations, right? Even yeah. get advice from JR, you know? Fire Excalibur. I mean, 
<laughs> randomly. But no, no, but here's the thing. Excalibur, <laughs> Excalibur is part of this, this fucking elite yeah, yeah, group. Yeah, I know. He, I he's know. Their, yeah, their main hype man, right? And okay, just random thought as well. Dynamite and Rampage is the same fucking guys on commentary. It's so irritating. Whatever happened to, you know, yeah, there are one or two guys that they swap out, like Chris Jericho comes in, Tony Shivani leaves, whatever. But it's the same vibe show, same announcers. Excalibur's voice is always there. Just take him, make it just, distinct. Make it different. Make get rid of it. Make it ROH. Put um that guy who's we Caprice, Caprice. who's amazing. You and know, then Ian Ian Recaboni guy as well. Yeah, just put both of them there. You want to add one Taz or Regal, whatever lah. But just have it be a separate show because yeah. really, right now Rampage is just not worth watching. Honestly, I think Tony Khan, yeah, he wants, I know he wants to still be part of the creative. That's mm. fine because that was what Vince McMahon was. Mm. But he needs an inner circle. And I don't mean Chris, okay, I mean Chris Jericho. So like Chris Jericho yeah. is one of them. I think he, okay, the, his only mistake, right, I think, right, that kind of made this all a situation was he chose to hitch his bandwagon on the elite. Yeah. Even though, yes, the elite, had the cloud at that point that they were available, they were the biggest unsigned stars. Yep. But I felt like they, he shouldn't have given them vanity roles in management. Yeah. Make them the wrestlers. Look, Cody was smart enough to realize that he couldn't do both. So he's like, you know what? I don't need this drama. I'm sure he felt the drama from Shinway, the elite. Sure. That's why he hits out. He's, he's the smartest EVP there. He was the first one to realize this is a problem. Time for me to go. And this powder keg this pressure has been building building pressure cooker has been building Chris Jericho smart smartest man there he was like you know what I don't need title just pay me money can already yeah that's the best and he still have more influence than the EVPs in my opinion exactly right because he legitimately has experience in big money drawing cards he was in the WWE blah 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 that kind of thing so yeah um, what, what yeah what, one last thing about Tony Khan that I felt that uh, even CM Punk said it in a press conference and I think that is very, very telling. Mm. He said like, we, he because I think uh, Tony Khan apologized because he didn't answer the question head on, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then Punk said, you know what? We are all learning here, Tony. We are all, we need to get better. We are all learning as we go along. Yeah. So, even CM Punk acknowledges that okay, Tony Khan is new in this. Yeah. I think as a smart guy, he seems like a smart guy. If he can remove his emotion out of the window, he knows what he needs to improve on. Yep. I think going forward, he will have filters. Because... Um, uh, like, le- well, hang on, hang on. I feel like he won't. Because, and hear me out on this, and you might yep. agree or disagree, right? I feel like he's a numbers guy. He might he might be one of those. He strikes me as one of those people who is so much into numbers, right? He doesn't actually have a good people person personality. Yeah. Does that make sense? Cody was that guy for him, clearly. Yeah. So now, now that Cody is gone, well, is Tony Giovanni going to be that guy? Does he have the experience? Well, that would put butts in seats. Um, well, okay, when, I, when I see like very successful ownership, right, in mm. sports team, right, there's one guy who's the analytical guy, all about the numbers, the business side. Yep. But there's always one charismatic PR guy that yes. can like be the, the face of the company and all that. Yeah. Tony can... No. Wants to be that guy, but he can't. See, that's the thing. At the end of the day, he needs to realize his strengths. His strengths is sitting back, analyzing the numbers, and, and doing making the big business deals. So, what he needs to do is take a back seat and let people with experience handle the pro wrestling, dealing with the egos. That's the big thing, and that's the main problem here. He couldn't deal with the egos because he's everybody's best friend. And we've heard before, uh, people like Joey Janela, people like, I can't remember who else, but instead of firing them or telling them they were not going to be used, he just quietly let them not be called in to do work. And then, oh, when the contract's up, bye-bye. Like, he is terrible I uh, just, people skills. I just realized something, bro. What? You know he, who he reminds me over in WWE? Who? That's not working there right now. Who? Fucking Shin McMahon lah, bro. <laughs> it's like Shin in the sense that he wants to be everyone's best friend. He's likable and stuff like that. But do you realize like Shin lacks a bit of that business savviness mm. or like ruthlessness yep. kind of yep. thing? And it's very well complemented by his sister. 
and yeah. his father. Yes, but over there, you see, they have the whole McMahon uh, family to, and well, the McMahon Helmsley family to deal with that situation. Here, Tony Khan is trying to do it himself. Of course, he's cracking under the pressure. Of course, he's you know bitten off more than he can chew. So the first thing he needs to do, he's understand that and step back and hire, bring in people or promote the people around him to do all this stuff that he can't do like we bring up the example once again he is the guy in charge of fulham as well as the jacksonville jaguars right he's not fucking calling plays and teaching them how to exercise and all that bullshit he has coaches and fitness instructors and pr people and hr people for that right why isn't he doing the same for aw i'll tell you why because he's a mark he's a fan he's like oh my god i get to play fantasy booker it's like me playing wwe 2k22 gmo i can buy sell buy sell wow show only because i'm a fan but at some point you have to realize uh brah this is this is not something you can do by yourself yeah, he can't help himself but get involved because I know he loves wrestling much more than his football or uh, yeah. American football. Um, but okay, you, you you know okay, I've been watching this show right now on Disney Plus. Mm. Uh, Welcome to Wrexham. Do you heard uh, about that? Uh, Ryan Reynolds bought a team, right? Yeah, he bought a football team. Football team. And, and the best part is this football team is all the way in Wales and he doesn't know anything about football <laughs> and he doesn't know anything about the community. But he's a sports fan. He wants to support this community. Blah blah blah. Right. And this team is fucking in FIFA. So, like, mm. do you think Ryan Reynolds, when he bought over the team, he start, starts managing the club? No! Starts, he might have a say in which players to buy, for sure, yeah. because he's funding it. But he's not going to fucking, like, tell the coach, okay, I want fucking Pele, buy fucking Maradona, and put inside in the team. Uh, they're, Maradona? They're not, how old already? Hey, not, they're not even alive. You know, Maradona <laughs> passed away already. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so, like, okay, this is my, if I want to fantasy book AEW right now, right? Mm. Make, the spokesman, the new Cody Rhodes, I think Chris Jericho. He's really the spokesman in a way. Yeah. So make him like um I, I don't know like uh what what is what is Stephanie's uh, uh oh, chief uh branding officer? I don't. Know. Well, okay, I I actually disagree. Unless you want Chris Jericho to retire as an on-screen character because he's still healing it up. Yeah. When 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 he does retire, and I feel like he might be Tony Khan's Patterson. I think he is. Yes. Yeah. Tony Khan's Patterson. In terms of senior management, like for like the wrestling agents that is dealing with the people, I want them to be like the one that is kind of setting the tone. Dustin Rhodes is there, for God's yeah. sake. Fucking- uh, they already have Jerry Lynn. I mean, these are some of the people that um, CM Punk brought up. Yeah, Jerry Lynn. Uh, even somewhat, somebody like, um, uh, what, what's that guy's name? Uh, not Dustin Rhodes. Uh, Arn- Billy Gunn. Billy Gunn, yeah. Billy yeah. Gunn. Uh, uh, Mark Henry, I think he's more into recruitment. Yeah, so he can sure. do all that. Paul White, no more BS. Where the fuck has he been? Yeah, like Paul White, I think that kind of guy's size, who's going to fuck with him? You know, yeah, if he exactly. wants to make shit happen. <laughs> you go in there and strangle the young bucks. Like, hey, fuck you, don't. Hey, you better not yeah. stop it with your whispering bullshit. No, here's the thing. Quite clearly what has happened is he has all these veterans there, but he has not empowered them. And I think for most people, if you talk about a management structure, and in a way, I'm talking about this in a um, uh, from experience, lah. You can have experience, but if you don't empower the experienced players in your team, they are not going to automatically stand up because some of them might be afraid. Am I overstepping my bounds here? Some Mm. of them maybe they don't want that role, uh, or maybe they are like, oh, wow, this is above my pay grade, or you, you know what I mean. For sure, for sure. That's why I say anyone who's listening to this podcast right now, please empower Mr. Young so he can create real change. Ah, empower me to do what? Vote for me for what? I, I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> okay, anyway, that's a very, no, psych, uh, very but, subtle but, thing. Yeah, but you, you get the point, right? You get the yeah, point that sure. like, you need to be able to... It doesn't matter how talented your people are. If you don't empower them, the right people, to do the things that you need, then everyone is doing whatever the hell they want. Lah. And in this case, he's empowered the wrong people. He's empowered the elite. That group of people who don't really know how to draw big money in terms of pay-per-views, in terms of like the big stage. Yeah. Um, it's, I think that's exactly the case. Is putting very inexperienced people in charge. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, I would say it's putting like somebody like John Laurinaitis in charge because what has he ever done in the business for him to be such a big role in the company? People power! You know, so so like I, I hope going. <laughs> well, that's a very good impression. I I hope going forward, Tony Khan gets the right people around him, and uh, 
whether that's does that mean bringing back the elite and CM Punk into the fold or what do you think about that? Okay, here's the thing, right? If they met, let's say you give it a couple of months, yeah. you bring back CM Punk, you bring back the elite. If they can do business, this will be the hottest angle of 2023. Yep. Look, I think like, so too. there is money to be made here. But, but, will their egos allow this? I somehow don't think so. You know what, bro? Mm. If they can actually work out their differences, this mm. can be the next big angle since NWO versus WCW. Don't you think so? It could be. Yeah, yeah. No, they, 100%. They can split the locker room right down the middle, cave mm. hopefully. Because Fucking, you see... He, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah who, they, who, uh, make who is il- uh, loyal to the elite one side. Make who is loyal to CM Punk, FTR, blah, 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 one side. Yeah. Easy already. And then you have the NWO versus WCW all over again. But can they do it? That's the problem. And this stems from a real life issue. At the end of the day, WCW versus NWO was by and large a work, right? It, it, it sucked. It sucked for a lot of people. There was real friction. There was real like backstage politics. Yes. But he already got hurt feelings. Like they already hate each other. So the only the only issue is that the elite wouldn't want to take a loss if they were to do this storyline. Right? Neither would CM Punk though. Yeah, so, but, there's nothing lots of money can solve. <laughs> Look, <laughs> the, the elite won't even take a loss to FTR. Let alone lose this entire feud. Uh, Irvin says, so what did Nakazawa and Cutler do? <laughs> I can just imagine this whole scenario where the three elite charge into uh, CM Punk's locker room and there's CM Punk with Ace Steel's wife and Larry the dog. And then Larry the dog is freaking out, right? Because you got like all some of these three guys making a scene. And then you got one naked oily man, Orang Minyak, in the background. Like, hello, that's Nakazawa, by the way. Orang Minyak is Nakazawa because, you know, he, he does the baby all gimmick, right? He's like yeah. sliding into the room. What's up? And then Cutler is fucking trying to film all this shit. That, that is the scene in my head. Bro, why does it feel like a skit from the office right there, bro? <laughs> <laughs> exactly the same, sir. And the craziest thing is there was a dog in the room and the only person who bit anyone was Ace Steel biting Omega. Can you imagine? This is like Brooklyn Nine-Nine, like all the zoom cuts. <laughs> yeah. da, 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 da. And then you see freaking Ace Steel but, oh, pulling Omega's hair, oh. biting his arm. And then Larry, the dog, like, What? What a what a game! You know what? I, it just came. It just came to my mind, bro. We we, we can ask one guy that in our chat for some first hand experience of Kenny Omega. Oh, uh, who? T. Uh? My mighty mighty, you're right there, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Can, can you tell us, bro, your experience? Because you shared the same locker room with Kenny Omega when he came to Singapore 2019, I'm, right? I'm sure he was nice. He, you, you think he's going into Statement's locker room and kicking down the door, demanding reparations or anything, man? Come on, lah. Uh, I mean, Irvin says, do you think they super kick the door? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like in character for them to do that, right? Yeah, like, yeah, boom. They're like, super kick, party! party! And then they kick <laughs> open the door. Kick the door. And then, yeah, so then. Uh, and then, like, okay... Honestly, nobody knows how this whole business went down, right? It's not like there's security footage. And apparently, nobody else is there. If anybody else was there, they are not saying anything because there might be legal um, ramifications. Yeah, they don't, they, they don't want to be like kind of caught in the act or caught in the middle of it, I think. Yeah, um, they got the police involved as well. Yeah, it's, it's tough. But yeah, Mati Mati, like, Kenny Omega, I think he's not really a... Uh, like, he doesn't cause trouble unnecessarily. <sighs> And I and, and I feel it's like honestly, I think it's the young bucks more than Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega seems to be caught in the middle of this shit. What you, you know how, what it is, right? When you are hanging out with the wrong group and you are a nice guy, but then your best friends are a bunch of dicks, and you become a dick because you hang around them as well. Uh, a dick by association, now. Mm, a dick. Uh, T says, "Well, what happened was we met. Uh, eh, when we met was that Kenny and Nakazawa were in their room. They come out around showtime to talk about their match. He's a chill guy. Yeah." You know, because this is like, we talk about this is a spot show for them. They are guests, they do their job, and they leave, right? They are leaving. Yeah, yeah. This is not like the company they are working at, that kind of thing. But I think I think the funny thing is, was, uh, I think Dharma, Destroyer Dharma was like, videoing them going out into the entrance. Oh, and yeah. He sent, it, he sent the footage to us. They were like, hey, this is a video of uh, Kenny Omega walking out. And then when he was walking out, right, Kenny Omega is like getting ready, yeah, yeah. like slathering. So then suddenly he looked at, Dharma like, uh, hey, uh, you're filming me? Filming me? Filming like, me. Like, <laughs> got, the, got the face, you know? Like, uh, yeah. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is a video. 
Uh, well, I mean, yeah. he wasn't expecting it, so you know, you can't hold that against him, right? But look, yeah. like at, at the end of the day, right? Like somebody, hey, somebody should do a skit, and we should do a skit, bro. Some we we even get Saleh, we go and film in some <laughs> office building, and we re and act this whole Young Bucks versus oh um, my god, you know, uh, CM Punk A Steel fight. We become like the S gag, uh, you know, like the work mat. Yeah, it's yeah. just it's just a bunch of them just doing a stupid skit. Like I yeah. think, can bro? You are not. <laughs> How are we gonna fight ourselves? I don't know, no I think quite funny lah. Uh, I, you... I, I I still have my CM Punk shit lah. I can become CM Punk for you. <laughs> take, take one fake dog, Larry the dog over there. Uh, I don't know if want to use your real life dog as well as part uh, of the skit, but sure. Can can can. She will bark one. <laughs> uh, Zayden says where to sign up. Okay. <laughs> We should do a crowdsource. Uh. We ask our listeners. Uh, hey guys, who wants to join us? We go do one time uh, the Elite vs. CM Punk skit. Fuck Put it la. on our Instagram page. Wow, uh, Go viral already. Uh, okay, uh. so... um, We, we kind of covered a lot of it already, right? Yeah, we, we did, we did. Uh, in, fall, a weird, in a weird yeah. way, we covered a lot, but we never actually covered the, the, this past week in wrestling. <laughs> Yeah, like we said earlier, you know, this is completely overshadowed the situation. I've watched the press scrum more than Dynamite, I swear, you know. Uh, um, at the end of the day, look, moving forward, right, and maybe we can put a bow on this. I think it is on Tony Khan to sort of realize what he can and more importantly, sure. what he cannot do. Yeah. Not let certain people run the show, people who are mm-hmm. not qualified and apparently people who are not professional enough. Yeah, for mm. sure. Um, do you know what's the funny thing is? If you mm. want to do like a quick recap on like the five non CM Punk AEW related news, right? A lot of shit happened that we just gloss over completely, or we never even mentioned until right now. Like what? Braun Strowman returning to the oh, Raw. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was weird, man. He looked sad. Like I don't know he, if he slipped and fell uh, when he wanted to do his oh. train. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that one he uh. Oh, is it really? Uh? Um, what's his face? Uh, Chad Gable was in the way and then he like, whoa, siam, and then he fell down. It was damn funny. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think he would be a great new challenger to rumor, especially if they can recapture 2017 Braun. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know what he said? Why? Bro, clearly, right, his could... narrative has been controlled. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so uh... what happened to EC3, ah? Uh? EC3 cannot do his CN- CYN show already lah. He's one because of his biggest stars left, what? He bolang also. And like, didn't Triple H, um, didn't Triple H, you know, hire him and he was in NXT? Shouldn't we expect EC3 next? Nah, I think he's too busy in his promotion already lah. Huh? Promoting what? He got no more narrative to control already, what? The, the, no, nobody's watching. I bet he cancelled his CN- CYN show that's supposed to go on like right after Adam Show returned to WWE. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so that's one thing. I don't know. So that happened. That whole meme. I know Raw feels like a lifetime ago, but the whole meme where Dexter Loomis was underneath the ring looking up at the Miss was yeah. hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like that Raw and SmackDown, they have like, you know, their main angles, but they have these Easter egg sort of side quests, sort of like blink it and you'll miss it. But then the social media team comes in to highlight it. You know, that's for the diehard fans. Oh, I, you, you know, they are, okay. I draw the comparison, right? WWE is like Disney and like Marvel. Whereas mm. AEW is like DC. They are shit is all over the place. AEW, sometimes you got, when you got good directors in DC and good cast, you get a good movie. But by and large, they're directionless. They're all over the place, right? Yeah, okay. That's okay. like AEW. WWE sort of has like a formula, a 10-year plan sort of a deal. We know, okay, what we want to do. And at the end of the day, it's the brand. So we can push out no names. Like, you know, did you know about Moon Knight or She-Hulk or Ms. Marvel? Ms. Marvel, uh, Ms. Marvel. <laughs> Before Disney started pushing them? No, not really, right? Unless you're yeah. diehard, then you, you know, uh, might know them. So there are a lot of parallels here. Now, what Tony Khan, AEW needs to do is what, uh, ironically, they're owned by WBD. What they need to do is what WBD has done. They put together a team, one hit person, m- map out the next 10 years. Yeah, they need to retcon everything. Yep. Uh, essentially what John Moxley did was he record everything when he cut that promo la, I think but okay right now uh, if John Moxley wins the title again it's a bit embarrassing I don't think he should win no like, he shouldn't 
No, like, it, it just feels, I feel bad for him, though. It's like, oh, shit, I only win it because, uh, I only held it because I was holding it for CM Punk, but then now, I win it back again, but only because CM Punk went left or was um, injured. Yeah. Honestly, don't you feel bad for Moxley? I think Moxley, I if he knew what was going to happen, he wouldn't have dropped the title to Punk. Like, yeah. He would have kept it yeah. and saved all this drama. But we know for a fact who we want to win this tournament, right? Okay, can course. we say it on the count of three? Okay. One, One two, two, three. three. Brian, Brian Danielson. Chris Jericho. No, I'm kidding. It's Brian. <laughs> no, it's 100% Brian Danielson. Yes. Oh, come on, right? Like... Um, uh, Ovin says the problem with wrestling is that too many egos and injuries that will screw up long term plans. Yes, but then here's this is just like any sort of um uh, when you talk about planning for uh, work, planning for school, it's still good to have a plan. And then when you have a plan, anything falls apart, you can work around it. Versus yeah. you have no plan at all. When things fall apart, lucky worse, you don't know how to deal with it. You know what I mean? All right. Exactly, and I feel like you can you can't control injuries. Injuries yep. will happen. You will fuck it up, right? Yeah. But that means you need to have a plan B, plan C, plan D. Correct. You have people Correct. next in line ready to step yep. up at all times. The better you plan, the more you prevent this shit from happening. And guess what? Tony can't. Can, uh, Tony Khan can't. Wow, well, that's easy for me to say. Tony Khan cannot plan <laughs> like that if he's doing everything. And I think Tony Khan can't be so. <laughs> Tony Khan cannot stick to a, a, a storyline, die, die, until to the yep. point that even though like something else better come along, he will mm. die, die, stick to it. He needs to be adaptable to change as well. I mean, credit to the WWE. Kofi Mania is an example of something that was just organically grown out of the blue. They're like, all right, let's fucking go with it. Let's create a moment at WrestleMania. Yeah, like like Hangman Page, I felt like when he finally won the title, kind of like an anticlimactic thing because Brian Danielson was the guy that people wanted. Yeah, uh, same same with um, FTR. So far, I mean, FTR is getting cheer. You you just listen to the pops FTR gets right, and still the one title they can't win is that title. Bro, their song, right? Mm. I mean. I, I'm not a guy from the 80s or 70s, but I'm fucking I'm like dancing to disco just listening to their music. I'm like, yeah. damn, this is Yeah, like, They probably have the most recognizable next to Judas theme song um, in AEW. I'm sorry, like, yeah. but AEW's music is quite crap. Not all, Everyone is not recognizable. Um, the one that I feel very sad of is the Wardlow. <laughs> <laughs> I really like Wardlow, but his song is like, this is his war. war. <laughs> it's better to just pipe in the Wardlow, the Goldberg thing, Wardlow, just do that. You know what's the most random thing on Dynamite that I actually laugh at? What? When John Moxley, uh, like, he go disturb uh, MJ as he's walking away. Oh, yeah. by the way, your music sucks. <laughs> Like, so random. Apparently, that's royalty-free music, you know? Wow. Yeah, clearly, right? Well, yeah. And and then, you know, there's the uh, AEW video game. Can you imagine, right, if let's say the Omega and the Bucks, they get fired, and then, yeah. you know, Adam Cole, the um, undisputed elite, they're all injured, and then, like, the FTR are not in the game as well. And fucking, when the game comes out, nobody's actually in it. Uh, I think that, yeah, so... It, I think only, that's the only reason why it will not they will won't get fired because who the fuck is gonna do the rollout for the game if Kenny Omega and the Elite is not there? Honestly, I'm very worried for the game. Um, the game has, in terms of development, it's been hanging in the air for such a long time, and then you know we hear issues like between the developers and Kenny Omega. Oh, Kenny Omega is tough to work with. Who the thought? I don't know. But but judging from the first uh, game footage that you saw, like, have you given given your thoughts about it? Because you, yeah, yeah. you you mentioned it, right? Yeah, it's very no mercy esque. Um, it looks fun. It looks like a fun sort of like arcade simulation. No, arcade, no, no, it's not simulation. It's arcade. More arcade, okay? Yeah, like two K twenty two will still be the simulation esque type game, yeah. and if they are not um careful, uh, they keep delaying it, uh, they put it out when WWE 2K23 comes out. It's a bit of a problematic thing because now you have a game which is almost two years old. Chris Statlander still has the alien makeup in that game. 
Bro, when they remember the first time they uh, released some footage, it was like Hikaru Shida and Chris Statlander was a thing. Yeah, and then now they are like kind of faded into the background already, right? Like yeah. this game is going to have two-year-old um, gimmicks and that is yeah. not going to be good, you know? And I mean, yeah. WWE, the 2K, they try to make it as updated as possible. Obviously, they can't, you know, develop, develop video game development cycles and all that kind of stuff. But because this AEW thing has been sort of hanging there, like I'm very, honestly, bro, very worried for it. Cody Rhodes uh, is still in the game somehow. So yeah. they better release it soon because if you're going to release it anytime next year, it's like one year since Cody bro, Rhodes left. So bro, no point. That, maybe that's the strategy. You release it when Cody Rhodes wins the WWE Championship. Ah, yeah. then, oh, Cody is at his highest. All of a sudden, you got a game with Cody. Uh, okay, that's well, the way, bro. So, okay, so let's hope that they release this by Halloween, I guess, by fall. Um, that, so far, no, um, no, absolutely no news. So it is what it is. <laughs> I love Zayden's uh, comment. <laughs> AEW shelf forever. <laughs> oh my god. Um, uh, okay, so, so like, yes. I mean, there it is. You know, the civil war. I don't know if it's still quote-unquote raging on, but I hope they move on from it and they get stronger, they learn. And just, yeah, there's no more press scrums. Honestly, I think it's a bad idea. For I think for now, to keep things on a lead and not leak tough stuff, I think, oh. you know, they should do it. Or do the press scrum only for your big four, big three. Not every single uh, pay-per-view, right? Bro, they, they only got a big four, bro. Oh, that's true. <laughs> I just realized that. <laughs> okay, then just do for one or two. Uh, you know, like, or yeah. when you have something big to launch. The, 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 the thing about this press scrum, I think it works only if they choose the right people to highlight certain storylines, not yeah. everything. Yeah, um, they are not highlighting storylines. It's literally a platform for people to vent and complain. And that's the problem. Yeah. Because you don't want them to bring all this like, you know, unprofessionalism to the table. Even if it is pro wrestling where they're supposed to be larger than life and talk shit and cut promos uh, and stuff like that. You know what's the funny thing is when he said like, uh, I know you fancy yourself a journalist, even yeah. in this Creep. stupid uh, like fake world of pro wrestling or whatever it is he said, right? Yeah, yeah. And I cannot personally attack and I'm like, hey, I write all these articles uh, for wrestling. No, he said, cra- he said crazy world of pro wrestling. You see, yeah, uh, despite all the things you want to talk shit about CM Punk being unprofessional, right? He still treats the business with respect, I feel. Like the yeah. business itself. He'll never make an opponent look like an ass. He will never say, oh, I love working with CM Punk. I mean, uh, with MJF, he's such a nice guy because he's protecting his gimmick. See, at the end of the day, like I, that's why I respect someone like CM Punk a lot more than I do the Young Bucks because at the end of the day, he wants to further the business of professional wrestling, not go and make myself, yeah, 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 I'm so smart. We, I know you're smart to me and then we friend, friend, I tell you secrets and you know, that kind of backstage, backstabby shit. Um, despite all the drama that went down, um, mm. has your opinion of CM Punk changed? Um... I see here's the thing it has not changed it has just been illuminated because I wasn't around or I wasn't paying attention to wrestling when his first like pipe bomb and then subsequent leaving of the WWE happened so I didn't pay attention to that right yeah. I only know of it like sort after of the passing fact. yeah after the fact and it's different when you are there experiencing it live I'm sure for you it was like whoa whoa what's going on right yeah whereas if you are sort of reading about it after the fact it becomes like oh okay lah Oh, this shit happened, law. You, you know? It's almost sanitized. Yes. Your yeah, it, you're getting a version of it that is like, eh, you know, someone's told a story. And you know, when stories are told, they can be told with a bias. Now we are watching this unfold right in front of our eyes on YouTube. Do you, do, on YouTube, huh? Yeah. Do, you, do, do you feel like um, this makes you more of a fan of him, less of a fan of him, or what's it <laughs> Ah... I wouldn't say fan, I guess maybe respect. Once again, you know, it's that the asshole, but you rather have him on your side because he will stab you in the front, not in the back. Yeah. I I just think of him, right? Okay, like, okay, I'm coming in from a fan. Um, My opinion of him didn't change. Mm. I think it kind of was reinforced a bit more. Yeah. It's like, you know, sometimes people say like, I'm loyal to you to a front until you give me a reason not to. Yeah. And people always talk about that in a very idealistic kind of way, but they don't mm. realize the flip side of it is 
if you're not lo- uh, I, I, when I decide not to write I'm gonna be complete asshole to you I'm just gonna fucking outcast you mm. like people don't think of it in that way they think of it oh this guy's a loyal guy right but now you're seeing like okay there's a flip side of being loyal meaning that you are gonna fuck other people up who are not loyal to you Mm. So so I kind of understand. Like it gives me a more nuanced understanding yep. of him as a person. He's he's not perfect, right? Yeah, nobody uh, is perfect. That's the thing, right? I think with a lot of sports stars, with a lot of movie stars, we put them on a pedestal. We ideal like we have this ideal version of them without realizing that hey, they're you know they're human beings. They have faults. They have character flaws, and they all have character flaws. Just yeah, you know, which are the ones you are willing to close an eye to which are the ones you're willing to accept and i think and that's the issue with people who are such like diehards they they cannot um look at it objectively in that oh my god yeah you know the the young bucks are the best they are so virtuous they're the, the greatest you know they would never do anything like this or cm punk he's the best you know he tells it like it is and that's what i love about him he's honest you know yeah it's a it's a weird thing because i kind of think that somehow the elite will be able to bounce back on their feet and kind of come yeah. back yeah, yeah. But but I feel with CM Punk it's a bit different because it might be like because he can already outcast from WWE. Yeah. Then this shit happened in AEW. Now people are gonna think that oh he's the problem. Yeah. So do but, you feel that there's a way back for him in AEW? Yeah. Yes, I do. But the Young Bucks and Elite cannot be there. Ooh, so it's an either or situation. Or or, or ROH, huh? you split. You literally split your company in half. And you mm. dump the elite and all that crap into ROH. But then again, I don't want like Claudio and the Black Cool, Black Cool, Blackpool Combat Club to be there. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Like unless you make ROH this fucking trampoline wrestling show, and then you make the real wrestling, the pro real pro wrestling on Dynamite and AEW. Um, I think keep them on separate rosters lah. Basically, yeah. do what. Uh, remember that time when AJ Styles somehow had a falling out with Paul Heyman? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. You know, they they may, might not like each other, but they're on different brands, so who cares? Well, <laughs> uh, Irvin says, rumor is Jericho is going for the ROH title. I actually saw that in that um, when Claudio and Dax were having their match, right? And on commentary, Jericho mm-hmm. was like so impressed. He was like, maybe that's the next title I go for. Was he? He said it like that? He, he said it. Like, I, I'm paraphrasing. He said it in a much more like mysterious, teasery sort of a way. Like he's never been R- I've never been an ROH champion. So I think there's not much to that. I just, I don't know. Maybe the only it's, thing, nah. the only thing I took away from that uh, whole commentary was Caprice making fun of Chris Jericho for shouting too much. Do you yeah, see yeah. that? No, and then Chris Jericho was like, he was like humbled. Like, I was like, oh my God, like I love Capri so much. So, yeah. so much more than fucking Excalibur needs to shut the fuck up. Yeah. You know what? Keep Jericho, fight him against Claudio, put it in the ROH. Like, I, why not, right? Yeah. Keep him away from the title scene. Uh, <sighs> let let Danielson be the guy in the, the mm. title scene. Okay. Um, And maybe this is my bias showing, but ultimately, if we look at an AEW without the elite versus an AEW without Punk, which AEW does better? Okay, very simple. I got historical evidence to prove it. Okay. The first two years of AEW without CM Punk, how was it? It was a shit show. But here's the thing. Elite, all Elite fans will say that, oh, they were the ones who brought all the fans in in the first place. And to that, I say, you're blinded by your loyalty to your group. And no, the numbers prove it as well. They brought, they brought a fan base over. Yeah, they I don't did. deny that. Yeah, but th- this very same fan base also appreciates good wrestling. And when you take away your elite, right, they will stay for the rest. They will stay yeah. for the uh, CM Punks and your Brian Danielsons and whatnot, whatnot. Okay, but, but can we all agree mm. in the year that since CM Punk joined AEW, AEW has been elevated to another level with yes. CM Punk? Yes, no, 100%. I agree. So you want to say, oh, you should show loyalty to the Young Bucks because they were there originally. Yeah, why not? You know, there's an argument to be made. You know what? Honestly, I feel like there's an argument to be made that even if AEW didn't start with the Young Bucks, you still had Cody, you had Chris Jericho. At some point, you would have had uh, Moxley. Moxley. Yeah. And there are a million and one, I'm sorry, like, there are a million and one other trampoline wrestlers out there Yeah, that could have uh, filled that role. And of course, like um, once Adam Cole is back and Adam yeah. Cole really gets back to like NXT Adam Cole, mm-hmm. you already have like another top star, top tier star there. Bro, 
And I mean, uh, Adam Cole without the Young Bucks influence. We've already seen what Adam Cole can achieve with proper um, uh, management, right? In yeah. NXT. In now, in yeah. now imagine he doesn't have his stupid bad influence friends there anymore. FTR without the Young Bucks hanging over them. Oh, it like, would be oh. like the standard bearers of the company in the tech yeah. division. So to go back to the question, an AEW without the Young Bucks or an AEW without CM Punk? Honestly, like, you know what my answer will be. Obviously, an AEW without the elite, actually, not just the Young Bucks, but the elite, would be a better product moving forward. Yeah. And more very, successful. Mm. Very simple, bro. Without the elite kind of like holding, I wouldn't say holding people down, but kind of taking up television space. Yeah. Can you imagine the likes of Ricky Starks? Yeah. Uh, the, the likes of fucking like Darby Allen again, finally. The likes of Ethan Page, for yeah. God's sake. Powerhouse Hobbs, um, Miro. Whoever Freaking... is in the Stokely Hathaway's group also. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. You know, um, yeah, all these people will have more time to yeah. get their shit done, right? Yeah. Uh, Jason says, my hot take, Punk will leave AEW before the Elite. Okay, let's look at the other alternative, right? Which is, like you said, Punk. Uh, an AEW without Punk. Well... <laughs> It's it, it's not like, oh, it will be the end of AW. Of course, it will not be. They will still survive and they might just thrive. But to what end? I, they will just be there. Stagnant. Honestly, AW without Punk will be fine if MJF takes up that ball and becomes that renegade guy. Yeah. But yeah. who is Punk, uh, MJF going to go up against? They, they, they need to build the babyface stars of tomorrow. Yeah. And you know what? I know the guy. The guy is right there, but he's he he hasn't been highlighted to the extent that I think he should. Who, bro? Fucking hell, Ricky Starks. Oh, okay, sure. Even I mean, even even Wardlow, once he is able to be the the guy like yeah. a Batista, can yeah. be the guy as well. Yeah, but we are not there because they haven't been building them. Because after MJF and CM Punk finished their business, Wardlow just a was fighting uh, fake security guards. Hey, uh, if Saleh, Saleh, if you're still in the chat, bro, I I know what's the topic to clip ready. Is this what? AEW without CM Punk, AEW without sure. the elite? Perfect. Bro, this this whole uh, discussion has been clip worthy, honestly. Uh, so who says AEW without Tony Khan? Uh, AEW without Tony Khan would not exist because they will not uh, be able to make money. Confirm. Gone. What's that? that what's that mean? can pack up already. Oh, yeah, look, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I mean, as much as we want to blame Tony Khan for a lot of things, right? Without Tony Khan's money, none of this shit happens. So we should thank Tony Khan, but also at yeah. the same time, Tony Khan, use your money wisely. Ah, uh, Don't yeah. just throw, and this is not like you buying collectibles and then putting up on your wall. It feels like that right now. And Did you they, know, yeah, some of the collectibles this, you buy already, you don't know what to do. You just shove them in one corner. Yeah, then it becomes like a a, a viewing a viewing booth, like, essentially, not something yeah. that you use, right? And then you you'll remember... have them show up in promos talking about, God, why have you forsaken me when really they are talking about you, Tony? Miro should have been a world champion by now. My thoughts. My, should I'm just should have been him. It should have been him. I am actually, <laughs> you know what? After this podcast, I am going to go on YouTube and listen to every Miro promo again. I confirm he was talking about Tony Khan the whole time. As, and speaking of Tony Khan's money, right? I will never forget the end of a press conference where he said, I, oh. I got so much more fucking money than fucking... Uh, what, what's his name? Uh, the uh, What's the promotion? Uh, they, uh, Crockett, Crockett Promotions. Uh, yeah. I got more money than Crockett. His eyes start buggy like... <laughs> hey, he's taking this very personally. Uh. I thought you're supposed to not take business personally. Uh, la, he hurt lah. Because no. you know, WWE playing dirty against him finally. It, it's so stupid. What do you expect? What, what, like, uh, uh, you're in the wrestling business, you know, and even in, not even just re- in any business, competitors are going to try to counter-program you. You have to expect yeah. it. And he, I, I remember, like, watching the press con, he got so fucking worked up. You know, I've been nothing but nice. I said nice things about them. And who knows what his, oh my God, you're getting me riled up, bro. Who knows what his um, interpretation of them not being nice to him is? For all we know, uh, they could have just been like, uh, actually, no thanks. Uh, you know, we, we don't want to do a cross promo. Bye bye. And then he's yeah. like, "Whoa, they were so rude to me." Uh, I, mean, I let I let everyone to talk nice things about John Cena on his anniversary, and then you do this to me. Yeah, I ooh, like I mean, come on, dude. What did you expect? What you expect to invade, bro? Fuck lah, relax lah, bro. 
Yeah, you know, you know what? I think he has to wise up, and he will. Mm. He will eventually, you know, he will eventually become like every Bishop or become bitter like Vince McMahon. I do not know, but uh. that's what the, that's what the wrestling business does to you. Uh. It fucks you up, lah. No, but it's any business that generates money where you have to deal with egos and stars and celebrity. It is what it is, right? You so, you don't work with someone if he doesn't benefit them. Why would they want to work with you? Yeah. Yeah, no, nobody is like all oh, smiles, whole hand. Oh, you say nice thing about me, I say nice thing about you. It's like, I don't know. I, I Okay lah. It, it feels like, uh, it feels like this is someone, the uh, first time anyone has said no to him because he's a billionaire. Uh-huh. I'm sure his whole life people have said yes to him. His own employees probably is like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Oh, fucking rah, 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 Tony, yeah. Uh, gee, everyone agrees with your shit ideas because you are paying them. Yeah. Imagine if you are... CM Punk is just the best definition of somebody who doesn't owe anyone a living. Yeah. He is not, like, how to say, tied down or, like, held down in any form by anyone, even his own boss. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens when you have, like, a legitimate life wire renegade who do whatever the fuck he wants to do. Lah. Yeah. So, I think he's starting to realize, and hopefully this is a lesson, like CM Punk said, we're all learning. He's probably just talking about him. You're just, you're learning about this <laughs> business, and it will eat you up and spit you out. Yeah, come, 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 I teach you. You know what? The only way to do well, uh, you go listen to Undertaker. Uh, Undertaker will survive. <laughs> loyalty, bro, loyalty. That, that's it, bro. He's going to, like, throw like, billions of dollars to Undertaker. Undertaker, you come in, and you will be our locker room leader. That's your... Title, Locker Room Leader. That was the one time that Undertaker uh, wanted to appear at that one, what? The, uh, what was it? Like the convention by... Uh, um, Starcars. Ah, uh. uh, the Starcars. Then after that, he had a falling out with Vince McMahon over it, what? Yeah. Elvin uh, says, what will AEW wrestlers court look like? Oh my God. I, all of a sudden, I'm thinking skits. <laughs> then we can have like the emo fucking Gen Z's in one corner, you know, your Young Bucks and a Hangman Page. I want to talk about my feelings. <laughs> and then they're whispering to each Poor other. Poor guy. Poor guy. He got deep thoughts in the corner. And then you got Darby Allen in one corner not saying anything. He fucking emo and shit. I, I know I know it's my generation, but very hard to imagine millennials being angry at each other. Like they, they don't have the backbone to be. No, no, then they like say passive aggressive shit. Yeah, yeah. Tough lah. Well, oh well. Jericho, up this whole says, oh, this is a never-ending conversation, you guys. Dovakin says, what? Jericho can be that locker room leader. I remember during the press scrum, Jericho, uh, he he mentioned, he told the locker room, like, don't go out there and like, you know, use vulgarities all the time. It, you know, it cheapens it, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, bro, you are the one going out there calling people shit, flipping the bird, and like, what's it, huh? Uh, he deep wanted shit, to, deep shit. Deep shit. He was the one who f- created that shirt. Uh, what was that shirt? Pussy, um, is it? No, no, uh, what? GYF. G- yeah, GYF. And then, Moxley. Hey, GFY. GFY. GFY, get the fuck out, right? Hey, no, GFY is what? Go, go fuck yourself. And then, Moxley went and said it on air. And then, he was like, ah, fuck. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Well, you know what? It's like the kettle calling the pot black. La. It is what it is. La. Wrestlers, you always do wrestler things. Danhausen is the judge. Hook and Darby Allen are your lawyers. Cannot. Darby actually, Allen doesn't talk. Actually, it's quite funny if they do that skit though. I yeah, will yeah. definitely watch that. <laughs> they just stand there and like... <laughs> oh dear gosh. Uh, okay. La. <sighs> um, this is... I think we all need a break from this drama. Let's go and enjoy wrestling for what it is. You know, uh, Raw is tomorrow. We got Dynamite coming up, the tournament and everything. If you ever want to laugh at the nonsensicalness of it all, the ridiculousness of it all, go can, can watch and listen to Jim Cornette as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, w- w- watch the press scrum again, but this time instead of focusing on CM Punk's face, focus on Tony Khan's face. That's the best yes. entertainment ever. And watch Miro's uh, promos. Now I feel tempted to check out his promos again. Bro. Yes, it's Miro. I'm, I'm telling you, bro. This whole time we were talking about, uh, you know, him talking to God. No, no, no. He's talking about Tony Khan. Amazing. Ma- Mansoor is super underrated. Look out for him. You know what, bro? I actually distinctly remember thinking about that. Yeah. Um, when I, I, I was... Uh, I, like I mentioned, right, I was uh, watching SmackDown while I was doing my laundry. So Maximum Male Models had this match. Uh, is Maximum Male Models and... Eight Men. Yeah, Eight Men. Uh, together with the Los Lotharios versus Hit Row and Street Profits. Yeah. I distinctly remember one spot where... You know how a lot of times you have wrestlers just standing there waiting to get hit? Yeah. 
Yeah, and then it's like, oh, it looks damn fucking cock lah, right? Like, Mansoor, I was like, oh, wow. Like, every time he knows that he's about to take a hit and he's early, uh, he will, like, stun a bit. You know, like... Hey, he, he, he buy he, the time a bit lah. Yeah, so it doesn't look like he um, he is waiting for a shot. So, like, you know, he's going to take a close line, right? He'll purposely face the wrong way. Mm-hmm. Then he will... like because And he has to overact because he's doing the whole male model thing. So he's like... And he looks around, bang, get hits with the... Cause I don't know why that really stuck out in my mind. I'm like, oh, I, I see the little efforts he's putting in. Mansoor, you have Mr. Young's stamp of approval. Mansoor, <laughs> sorry, Mansoor, Mansoor. Bro, the maximum male models is like my new guilty pleasure, bro. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know who, I think it's the average 95 on our, mm. on our Ma- fucking Discord. Maxine, bro. Uh, yeah, he forgave for the stick over Maxine, but... She, I mean, you know, she's beautiful and all that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm interested in LA Knight making a ah, return, yeah. potentially. Well, I mean, there was this whole thing where he talked about the night as long, whatever shit, and I'm like, oh, okay, is he hinting LA Knight is coming back? Yeah, things are getting interesting, you know? Yep. Karen Cross is killing it on SmackDown. There are other things in wrestling that is entertaining, but again, the shadow of this whole situation makes it very tough, but we got to get through it, right? Bro, you know what this means? In about 10 years' time, when Dark Side of the Ring, the elite comes out, oh, we are going to love watching that shit. But somebody needs to die. Then it will hey, become the next level. <laughs> hey, what? No lah, can just do what already lah. Can do uh, uh, like the docus. Like from hell like that lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or oh, okay lah, 15, 20 years' time. I'm, bro, we, we better be around, okay? We better be around for that shit. Hopefully, this podcast is uh, uh, streaming live from the Metaverse by then. Huh? Oh my god! We're all wearing headsets and yeah. actually wrestling each other in the Metaverse. Oh dear gosh, I think that'd be quite funny. Lah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, we won't go through every single thing that happened, but, you know, we covered this uh, whole debacle already. Everybody, thank you so much for joining us and spending your Monday afternoon with us. We've almost hit the two-hour mark, actually, so we appreciate That's your time, nice. as always. They're very uh, appreciative of hmm. everyone listening in. And of course, uh, as you can see, we got no more Nick Mutt as our sponsor already. Uh-huh. So he already finished his uh, package with us. So, But please keep following him and uh, please keep supporting local wrestling companies. Or should I say local companies that are wrestling fans? Sure, whatever the case may be. And of course, if you'd like to support us via Patreon, we have a Patreon link. It's down in the description. If you haven't joined the Discord yet, Come join the Discord and talk cock with us. Uh, we try to react as things happen as well. You know, since we do this podcast only on the, the Mondays, right? The shit that happens in between, we can, you know, get everybody's reaction, our reaction. Sometimes we jump in as well and chime in. Um, it's always good fun talking about pro wrestling. Yeah, man. Um, Mighty Mighty apparently gave a shout out to VPW. So Vietnam pro wrestling is a thing. So they, ah. they actually have a promotion there in Vietnam. So... Uh, let us know what's going on. Send bro, us, uh, take us on our Instagram. Bro, you, you know what their tagline should be? What? For sure, for sure. <laughs> is that like a, supposed to be a play on my, my catchphrase? Yeah, la, you know, if pho is uh, Vietnamese uh, noodles, right? Oh, pho, like pho, 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 okay. pho, sure, pho, sure. Come on, come oh, on. Okay. Give a brother some pro- props. Ah. Late to the party. Good job, good job. Okay. Ah, we want Nick Mutt. Tomakin says Nick Mutt is Team Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Mutt is uh, Team Elite, is it? Ayo. Oh, we did hit 15 likes on the um, uh, episode, right? And I did mention earlier just now when we were talking about it, right? That I would reveal who I was alluding to earlier. Mm, so how? I gotta do the re- I gotta be the Joker, Mr. Young. Wrestling fur, everyone says Zayden. A joke? What Joker? Oh, like, as in, like, 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 like MGM lah. Okay, the point is, right? The point is, we were talking about like who's the asshole you would rather deal with like up front. <laughs> and then I mentioned that I, you know, in my past have worked with people like that before, right? And this should come to no surprise to anybody who has followed his career. Um, but I'm talking about uh, an ex-co-host of mine. And if you know my career, you know who he is. And I already say he's a he, so that's a dead giveaway already. And uh, look, at the end of the day, right? Like, I don't even think that he would be offended that I did say this because, uh-huh. you know, he's quite upfront about the way he is. He's the sort of guy who, he will say what he feels. And if you don't like it, well, shove it up your ass. It's a lot like CM Punk. And he will go to the bed, he will go to bed for the people that he cares about. Lah. Yeah, and he has gone to bed for me many, many times. And I appreciate it. It's not DK lah, wah, lao eh. Yeah, he's What's never it? been my co-host. 
Oh, <laughs> mighty, mighty. What the fuck? No, no, no. He, eh, DK reports to Mr. Young, please. Yeah, exactly. I'm Put his boss. Put some respect. Put some I'm respect Mr. Young. Mr. Young. <laughs> I know Mr. this. Yeah. This co-host is, is somebody I co-hosted with before I joined Power. So Ooh, there you go. Okay, go do dig, dig, dig. Do your research. <laughs> ah, there you go. Okay, uh, I, I purposely kept it vague enough. So um, that being said, once again, everybody, thank you so much for hanging out. We appreciate your time. Uh, go enjoy the rest of your Monday. I will be streaming later on my Twitch channel, playing horror games again from seven PM onwards. So that's Mr. Young GG on Twitch. All right, have fun, Mr. Yang. I'll be spending this weekend, uh, uh hopefully pleasing my girlfriend, um, for in her what? birthday. In what her, way? You know, giving her a very nice birthday gift you know, and all that kind of sh- stuff. Shaving the moustache, everything, so it's smooth, smooth, huh? What so the hell talking about? I have no idea what talking about. But so, okay. so that when you know things happen, it's nice to feel. <laughs> Uh, that one giving too many things away. If you give me twenty likes, I'll tell you what exactly I'm going to do. <laughs> Hello, I know. It's caress the face. Uh, when, yeah, when, sure. when, when you all don't touch face, touch face, ah, then like not stubbly what? Okay, eat one ma- thing <laughs> <laughs> Irvin says eat muffin. Eat muffin. One thing we're not going to do, we're not going to watch wrestling lah. So I'm sorry, I'll, I'll be away from wrestling this week. So we shall uh, see what happens next week, yeah? It's Kali, uh, another press scrum happened. No, no, okay, okay. Uh, everybody! <laughs> Get your minds out of the gutter. We should and get out. We should get out of it before we like. Uh, yeah, we bury ourselves deeper. You know what? This is this is like CM Punk and his press scrum. Huh? We should just stop it before we say too much. Yes, yes, indeed, indeed. Everybody, have yourself a great week. We'll see you again soon. Please drop by the Discord, and we'll see you there. Foreign shaking his head already. Is Mister uh, Young and it's foreign in the building? Have a great week ahead. Kick to the gut. I like it. <laughs>